an amnesiac walks into a bar. He goes up to the uh, beautiful blonde and says, so, do I come here often? Laughing hurts, man. <laughs> What's better than winning silver at the Paralympics? Being able to walk. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, hit it, mom. Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another episode of In the Doghouse, the podcast that's meant it when it said it. One episode a week in sickness and in health. I think. Unlike your fucking parents. <laughs> <laughs> if they'd have turned around earlier and said, oh, hey, fuck it, you two boys, like if it had been like 90 to 10. It was. At the start, it was like we put a little poll up on Instagram, be like, I don't know if anyone else saw it. I was like, look, boys, me and Marlon are fucked. I've always, we've both got throat infections. We're fucking, we're clapped. Like, you know, do, do, can we, please, can we have the week off? It gave them a little poll box and they've just been like, no, dance, you little bitches. <laughs> do a thing. So here we are. You can't. <laughs> we're not very well, but we're here. Ring the fucking bell. Housekeeping. Buy the merch or don't. No one fucking cares. I'm not your real dad. Now fuck off. Wow. Okay. That was good. I enjoyed that. But become a Patreon because Patreons are incredible. Yeah. And they get to join the Discord. Yeah. The Discord is fucking fire. Um, there's loads of cool shit on there, as there always is. It's always popping. Every morning I have a little look, see what's going on then, and just always madness. Um, also, if you're a Patreon, you can join in in the Pit Viper giveaway, which is tonight. Tonight. It's on Friday. Um, as with, long me, as we haven't died. Me and Marlon are going to be on YouTube, hopefully with our voices a little bit better than this. Um uh yeah two we've given away two pairs two pairs two a month pairs. No. i know you know the patreon's grown so Madness. should what we give back to the community so yeah we'll be on live on the youtubes tonight which on the good. youtube channel yep we'll be on there having a fucking grand old time um hopefully yeah um oh, oh well, I, this is usually the bit where we plug the the charity auction but that's um, done that's done now buy tickets to the event which happened last week yeah so that's done but uh yeah well before we get before we get into it a massive shout out to the sponsor of this episode which is i can't remember now it's the run and drainage group it's the run and drainage group <laughs> i might refund all the sponsors for this episode <laughs> a massive shout out to the run and drainage group for sponsoring this episode look Keith, you know as well as I do. Marlon, you don't know because you don't know. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to drainage and sewage and uh, all, all that kind of stuff, it's not, it, it looks, it might look simple. It's not. I've actually put my own sewage, uh, my own sewage, um, what do you call it, a sewage tank. And you did a shit job of it. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. Trying to get the full right. Uh, that, I've, I've, I've told you before, I had a Pucano in the farmhouse once. Can you put the knife down? What are you doing? I ain't got any nails. Um, we had a Pucano in the um, in the farmhouse because we didn't. Inst we thought we'd have a go at installing our own fucking septic tank. It didn't go well. A Pucano came up from the Did central shit job. from the central drain of the floor. Imagine walking into your fucking. I literally walked oh, in. That. The old man emptied the like ran the bath. Or something. I can't remember what he did. He did something. I flushed the toilet, then shit just come pouring up from the floor. If you don't what want that, don't don't have a go at these things. It's it, when it comes to poo. Right? Imagine if imagine you misses. You're like, you know, oh, don't worry. I'm gonna. Oh, I've got this. I've been on YouTube. I know how to install a septic tank. Fucking four months later, poo is rising up from the floor. Just like, I told you to get money. The men you want to get in is the Rutland Drainage Group. They they. Right, they do everything from fucking from small little septic tanks all the way up to large sewage treatment plants, uh, sewage treatment installations, servicing, repairs, inspections, um, getting stuff up to code. Like we said, having surveys done just before you buy a house to make sure you're not going to be landed with a massive bill because your stuff's not up to code. Like I said previously, my my parents-in-law house they nearly were let, they nearly got landed with a 60, 17 grand bill until they got some guys come in surveyed it and said no don't worry it's all good you're all up to code you know for the for the minimal charge it's going to be it's so so important 
to get things like that done before you come to either sell or buy a house. It's really important. So a massive shout out to the Rutland Drainage Group. The Rutland Drainage Group are shit hot at what they do. (laughs) Your puns are so bad today. Right, massive shout out to them for sponsoring this episode. Right, Marlon, who are we joined by this evening? Uh, This evening, we got the one, the only two can, Van Damme. Van Damme. I, I, the, I, for the listeners I'm just he's gonna, completely lost his voice I'm he's just, just here in spirit I'm just going to let you know that the only reason Keith is here is because his missus has got the same thing as us so he's like well fuck it I'm going to get it anyway so that's why he's come in we're not <laughs> we'll just like right, Keith's Keith, the one we care, le- Keith, care least about so that's why he can come in and catch whatever we've got he's like well fuck it I'm going to go at some point and I to be fair I had I did have a bit of a croaky throat for about three quarters of an hour the other day. Oh, and fuck then that off, Keith. Off. But like, I think this is the second or third time I've been on that and you two cunts have been fucking useless of illness, is not it? I don't think we've been this bad, to be fair. No, not this bad. No, we've been ill before and done this, but like we said... I've never like... contemplated just fucking it all off for a week. Seriously, this is the this today was the first ever day <clears throat> that me and him were both like, let's just not do it. If, uh, for the first time in three years, let's just not do it. I was asleep on that sofa till seven o'clock. And I was like, shit, I got an episode to record in a minute. Yeah, but we did it. We're here. We dragged ourselves out. Keith come in and save the day as well. So thank you very much, mate. Anyway, you guys. Mate, um, yeah, well, listen, you know, at least he'll he looks another amazing, doesn't he? He looks like he's just, you know, I don't know. He looks like he's ready to go out on a night out. And there's me <laughs> and you just look like shit. Well, I mean, work trousers. Well, I don't know. You just look, your hair's all looking good. Your beard's looking smart. It looks like you've just fucking about hey, to go out. meet all hanging out. You look like you're just about wild. to get dressed up and go back out to the event. I'm, I'm still journeying back from the event, mate. I'm walking back from he's the event. Walk, I've just gone past Jaws. Cloud nine. Me and Marlon look, we've been dragged for a fucking edge backwards. <laughs> the M69's a fucking long old road, mate, if you haven't fucking remembered. <laughs> been living off the land. For if days. only they'd have come to this event, we put a money bus on the cunt. <laughs> <laughs> And there was fucking oh. free food. <laughs> and it was free food. Mad. It's almost like you miss out on stuff. Crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, Marlon, how's your week been, buddy? Your week's been good, mate. Yeah? Um, I don't know what's happened. It's all a, it's a big fucking blur. Obviously, we had the event on Saturday. Anchor have delivered... The other bit. The, the so- solar panels. The solar panels have arrived. Holy shit, there's some units. Oh my lord. They Lord. are so fucking heavy. <laughs> and they got like four foldy out things and then they do w- weird shit and they get the sun and stuff. Oh. It just sounds like, it sounds like your fucking transport is going to end up as a Mars rover, mate. Yeah. It, la- it lands at Glastonbury and things start folding <laughs> out. Start sending sending data back to base about I just, battery I just, life. Yeah, I just want the beers cold, mate. I think we'll be sorted on that front. I think we will. Um, what the, what else have I fucking? I don't, I don't even know don't what ask day me, it is. Mate. Um, <laughs> it's just stare for the listeners. He's just staring into the abyss. I don't know, I, what else have I done? I like, like my last as the whole of this year. All my spare time has been taken up with the event. So, I, I've now got nothing to do apart from stuff, merch. and I've got nothing to do. Oh, no, no, merch is like quiet and right. Yeah, I, that's I love oh, January, me. February with merch, because merch it's just fucking flat at the moment. We've Let's like, find not... you something to do then. Oh, imagine if... Like, have you cut well, your grass yet? Oh, yeah, do you want to be real funny? No, I've got some order, if, like, <laughs> if you <laughs> ordered all, like one key ring. <laughs> Why, Marlon, right, I'm right Everyone, up. get on the fucking website now. Order one, Start like, ordering shit. Order, order like, Give this cunt something to do, because if not... Order a key ring and a sticker. We all know Marlon's going to be sat on a sofa, festering away with his fucking condiments on the corner, his chips and chicken nuggets. <laughs> get in there. Give him something to do. <laughs> I do have... Um, I got a... Uh, the one, the only, Mr. Phil Barton's Discovery 4 in at the minute. Oh, is it still down here? Yeah, he is booked into work. Oh, and he's gone back up? He's gone back up. Fucking some boy. Went out back up with Jukes. Ah, Jukes. Um, so I had it all apart earlier. Oh, yeah? Because he was... He took it to a garage up there, and they said they wanted to take the body off, and I was like, I know what it is. Just bring it down. It'll be fine. Because you don't have to take the body off to get to the EGR pipe. Yeah. So I sent him a picture earlier when it was all apart yeah. of another engine I've got out of another car yeah. on the floor. And I was like, mate, it's really easy once the engine's out. <laughs> oh my God, you, you horrible prick. cunt. They had assholes up there, honestly. <laughs> Remember when my fucking Range Rover got yeah, done and they were banging a, away. banging a spanner on the fucking crash bar? Yeah. Um, 
So I've got Mr. Phil Barton's current bits at the minute. That's all good. All the bits are ordered for that. I am your man for all your 4 by 4 shit. Land Rivers mainly. Don't bring it to me. I hate them. Well done, um, you. Keith, how's your week been, mate? Yeah, it's uh, it's not been too bad, mate. First week back to work. I had a little bit of time off. Obviously, leading up to the event, which was fucking lovely. Um, probably busier at home than I was at work, to be fair. The amount of shit she had me with. Nah, I'm only joking, mate. We just spent a lot of time with the kids. It was nice. half term, wasn't it? So, oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, bit of football here. Looking for fucking house keys because I lost my fucking house keys. It was the bird of my week, you mate. Get my guess my tags. Get some air I'm going to have to, mate. Mate, they're brilliant, apart from when they don't work. Apple think you're going to get raped. I might have to have a bit of boss and get some of the Hilti tags with the fucking tools and bang one M on it, because he knows where everything is all the time. It's great. It's like, <laughs> mate, and it's, it's amazing. Like, if you want to know where something is, ping it up on the phone. Bosh, it's there, mate. So I'm going to get some for the keys. So That's a good shout. It, oh, honestly, it literally it did ruin my week, because I'm one of them people I need to know where everything yeah. is. No, I'm exactly and the same. Yeah. Obviously, I'd finished from work on the Friday. I thought, right, what have we got going on? I've got a whole week like with the kids doing this that, and the other then we got the event on Saturday night happy days I ain't got to go nowhere and I think it was like on the Tuesday or Wednesday I was like tapping myself down where thinking where have I put, where have I put my fucking keys like oh perhaps she's moved it when she's been tidying up or perhaps one of the little kids have picked it up and stuck it in the bin because they got a habit of doing that like anything's possible kids are in cunts, house. Aren't they? Just anything's like in general, possible what is wrong with them so I thought right I'm looking mate I turned the kitchen over the living room the bedroom the sheds oh because Monday was a shed day I've emptied all my shed out and rearranged it who loves a good rearranging down their shed? Yeah. <clears throat> All the tools go back where they got to go. I've, I've moved my bench around. The amount of shit you find. So I did it a couple of weeks ago and just pulled everything out. And I was like, why the fuck have I got like half a fucking tube of tiger seal, which has gone off, like go in the bin. There's yeah. fucking three empty paint tins. Like what, why am I sitting? What am I going to do with these? I t- yeah. Literally me clearing out. <laughs> always ha- like, there's always half empty pin- tins of paint because you pay good money for them, but you're like, oh, I might need that. You never do. And it's gone off. No, Cause I hard. usually can't remember which fucking gray with painted, which cunt in room. You find the old fucking rolled up mu- um, rug with the mummified stripper in it. You're like, oh, I knew I was going to get rid of that. <laughs> Well, that's, that's what Monday was. And I thought, right, I'm going to go. I literally walked in, opened the door and went, fuck it, the weather's nice. I'm going to sort this out. So I just started emptying it. And then I emptied it and found a nice tin of white paint. I thought, I'll paint the door in the sheds because it ain't been treated yet. So I just stood there and painted it. I was like, right, now I'll put it all back in. Anyway, so then I was thinking, fuck, maybe I lost my keys in the sheds. Uh, and I filled up two dumpy bags of shit. <laughs> and oh, I took oh, shit. And oh, I, them, I took them down the tip. Right? That's that fear-inducing so, moment, isn't it? So now I'm like, right, so what's on these keys? Uh, both my door keys, the door key to my mum's house, the key to my gun cabinet. Oh, I've done that. Right, so I was like, me cabinet keys bollocks. Once. Now it's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, if someone finds these, and like, I've, what am I going to do? Anyway, so... Has now, it got your address on it as well? <laughs> no. So now I've got to backtrack my steps. So I was like, right, when was the last time I saw them? Well, I thought I brought them in on Friday when I emptied my bits out of the van. Then I went to football in Bridgewater with the kids on Saturday morning. Oh my God. So I drove to Bridgewater. No, you didn't. Yeah, I drove all the way no. to Bridgewater. And then I couldn't get into the college grounds because it was locked up for half term. So I piked over I, the fence. I, I fucking tried, honestly. I got over the fence, scanned the whole field. They've cut the field as well with the grass. And I thought, oh, fuck me. If anything, it's gone the fucking grasshopper. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's gone. No, it's just hit a blade and gone. Bang! Yeah, see you later. <laughs> over so Hinkley. On there fucking scanning. Like, can't find it here. Right, jump in the car, drive back to Wells I went down the tip searched all around the 40 yard bins asked matey boy in there anything about it no nothing went into the local petrol station did I drop it in here they're fucking clueless no point looking in there right let's move on to the next place went everywhere mate I've even got the missus emptying out the fucking bin bags in the bins mate thinking the fucking kids have put it in there like mate we are turning the place inside out she says to me why don't you message um, Ed see if they're in the back of the van like you know obviously you had them at work didn't you I was like yeah yeah I was like Hey, Red, mate. So, do us a favour. Have a look in the van. See if my keys are in there, mate. Ah, later. Message back. Nah, shag. Not in there. All right. Thanks for looking. Appreciate it. I'm ticking boxes yeah, in just, now. Yeah, try, yeah. Just trying to work with it. Process of elimination. Get us to Friday, mate. And I know this has ruined my week. I'm one of these really weird people where something can just fucking sit heavy if it's on in me. Back in your head, yeah. It's oh, just... mate. Like you know, she's sitting there going, "Stop being nothing. such a grumpy fuck off." Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, mate, like I can't. I lost some pogs about seven, eight years ago. <laughs> Still irritates me now. <laughs> So like it got to Friday and I thought I'd just admit defeat. That's it. They're gone. I'm never going to find them again. And I thought, look, tomorrow is another day. We've got a bit of shooting with the boys and we've got the event. Let's get ready. So I'm polishing my shoes. I'm bullying them up. I'm pressing my fucking suit. I'm ironing my shirt, getting fucking ready. And uh, yeah, obviously we'll come to it in a minute. No doubt. I had a fucking great night. Sunday, felt nice and relaxed, chilled out. 
oh bollocks I got back to work on Monday all right let's get things ready jumped in the van fucking Monday went to work opened the back door there they were back of the van so I assume Ed looks for things how like Beth looks for things <laughs> if it's not in oh. front of you I was not gonna say. it's not there to be fair he probably only looked in the front didn't think to look in the back whatever it is what it is isn't it but mate just for fucking three bits of fucking metal my life oh, feels so much yeah. better now yeah, in it, when you find them, you are just like on cloud nine. And the fact we've just spent the last five or ten minutes on a podcast talking about how a fucking bunch of keys can affect someone's life yeah. just shows how fucking it old does. we're I've, I've lost my keys before and I lost them, lost them. They were gone forever. I had to go have them all recut and it cost me like 70 quid to have all these keys uh-huh. recut. And I was just like, oh my fucking life. But when you find something like that, it's just like, she's like, have you found them? I'm like, yes, I have. And you're fucking having it when we're getting over. <laughs> I just thought to We're myself, having fucking Chinese and you're having it in the ass. Let's go. Bush. I just thought, <laughs> like, I'm not saying I can pick door locks, but I've never done a gun cabinet. <laughs> I don't I think you can. I Silence like, came right, the loud reply. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was that was pretty much in my week, mate. And yeah, back to work now, which is it's not been too bad. We've been all right up till now, but I think we've got a bit of shit weather coming in. And we that's have, yeah. Fucking we've been When's the snow coming? Oh, 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 you always me. have a bit in March, don't you? End of Feb, start of March. That's why I'm not going to fucking America till the end of the year because the old man's like, you always go away when the snow comes in and i got lots to do. <laughs> <laughs> and he sounds exactly like that. What about you, Reg? Oh, man. Apart from feeling ill. <laughs> um, honestly, I fucking... I thought I saw the event and they were like, oh yeah, fucking hell, Reg. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, well, the whole we say was like, you got much on this weekend then, Jack? I'm like, yeah, I got work tomorrow. And they're like, ha And I'm like, no, no, seriously, I have work tomorrow. Then get into half two, got out, fucking got to work at half seven. And um, yeah, it was like, it was all right. It was fairly chill. Not too much on, just a bit fucking, I wasn't that hungover, really. I was just fucking shattered. I mean, just like, life's back like you were, just fucking out. So I got work done. Now, I finished up in the morning. The old man was like, right, well, I've filled the heater. Uh, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, uh, you're saying things like I have to come in this evening. You're saying things like I am working this tonight. And he's like, well, yeah, you're right, aren't you? I was like, yeah, I, I guess so. I thought there might have been a little bit of leeway. You might have turned around and gone, you know what, son? Congratulations. What a fucking brilliant night. It was amazing. It was, I will work Sunday nights. So you can have a bit of time. Why well, I'm going down the pub. <laughs> Roger, yeah, no worries, Dad. I'll just, I'll check round. That's fine. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. Thanks for the fucking invite, Dad. So I'm like, fucking. Uh, so leading up to this, in the week we've been loading cattle out of one of our sheds. And I was using a bit of a ropey gate, as most any fucking livestock driver knows or any farmer knows. Your loading gates are your shit gates. So you take your any gates that get battered in the shed, they come out and become your loading gates because all they need to do is just stop the cattle, you know, going anywhere. Just funnel them up a fucking ramp and i got i was using one of me loading gates and one of these fucking long horn cunts that i fucking detest he just took one look at this gate he must have done a little uh like a little terminator a terminator view of like an analysis of the structural integrity of this gate and just went absolutely no chance it just went smash <laughs> straight through it i mean he bent the fucking rungs in his gate played straight through it just fucked off and i was like be free i was like you know i said 51 shag i think we might call that 50 <laughs> anyway luckily luckily i managed to get him back but he bust his gate to pieces anyway not the point i was going where are we loaded cattle uh, a couple of days previous i had to like walk up over there to go turn on the generator in the evening to fire out the fucking heater tank and um <laughs> i was like walking along and because what i mean this was a loading gate i mean the cunt had been repaired about 10 times so your upright pieces of fucking steel bar had been tech screwed to the rungs before because all the welds had broke <sighs> as a cow had gone through he'd ripped one of these upright bars off with all the tech screws in it's pitch black I'm walking up to the generator like, la, 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 la. And then I just scream. And I mean scream the word cunt as loud as I can as a tech screw enters the ball of my foot. Oh, fuck that. A rusty tech screw. And I was like, it's Sunday. I am tired. I have not had my tetanus. If I die, I die at this point. <laughs> I am okay with this. I'm just like, do you know what? Put me I'm my misery. Literally, bury me a G at this point. 
<laughs> so I was, honestly, I pulled it out my fucking boot and I was like, I haven't even had these eagles that long. I, I don't pay for them, work pays for them. But I was like, I'm, yeah, work is work. I'm work. It's my business. I was like, I'm, I am not fucking having another set of eagles. So how about seven at night? I go out of the workshop, get a drill out. You know where this is going. I get a drill you out. Pardon? You mushroom it, yeah. You go fucking put a push in, pull out in a cut. <laughs> <laughs> She won't go flat again. I was I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I'm not referring these. I could tell it was leaking because I was walking around the yard and a fucking water was coming through. I was like, no, no, we've got to drill. Drill out the fucking hole. Got the fucking push in for eight. Fucking whack in there. Clip the ends off. I was like, there we go. Job, job done. done. And fucking leak, yeah. So I think I've I think I've done a good enough job. Yeah. But um, yeah, other than that, not not really too much, boys. Not really too much. Um yeah. Got some Land Rovers for sale at the moment. The old man's gone a bit mad. I mean, uh, he, Madder. My old, I can see where I get it from now. My old man has a very obsessive personality and so do I. And I've got it from him. Once something, if it, you get attached to like something. You get he atta- says obsessive, we say irritating. Why? Well, some people potato, say potato. Potato. Well, most people say addictive. I just say obsessive. But <laughs> <laughs> So he sold, he sold a couple of vehicles recently. We're having a right trim of the herd at the moment. Like, I mean, we've never done this before, but it's like, we're getting rid of some shit. Not sh- not getting rid of shit. We're just getting no, rid of stuff. Shit. In his own words, son, when you got a fucking lever arch file full of fucking log books, <laughs> it starts to get on top of you after a while. We're getting rid of some stuff. So yeah, we're literally it's all going like everything's going. Flash sale. I know everyone. Everyone down a fucking pub or anyone that looks on bloody auto trade must think fucking old old, <laughs> old man Reg is going bust. He's selling everything. Must go half off. Closing down sale. Have you got one of them wild waving wobbly inflatables, we man? Do. Yeah, just like come on wow, out. Flash sale. I got I got uh, uh, two Range Rover Sports for sale. I got four Defenders for sale. Four, yeah, four Defenders for sale. And what else? I think I got the old man's on about selling a couple of motorbikes. Like it's, honestly, I don't know what we're gonna do. What are we gonna do with all this space, Marlon? Fill out with more. Fill out with more shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it's crazy, but it's, it should be good. I mean, I'm looking forward to having more space. He was like, "What are you doing with your Range Rover?" I was like, "I ain't going fucking anywhere now." No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was just like, "The insurance come for all else. I renewed the cunt. He ain't going anywhere." But yeah, so yeah, other than that, not too much. Obviously. The event, but yeah, that's a whole that's a whole topic in of itself. But <laughs> yeah, <coughs> yeah, man, that's, that's been my week. That's been my week. Get that bottle of port down your edge. That's, um, you that's why you said get drinks and port. So I've got some here. I think this is. I think Ed brought this on the show about two years ago. It's been just sort of knocking around here ever since. But yeah, I think it'd be a good idea, or maybe a bit of that fireball. <laughs> oh, I think the cork's gone fucking dry because I've stolen oh, it the wrong way. Like fuck's a, I'll, put, I'll, put up, I'll put it upside down for a minute and see if we can fucking mo- moisten <laughs> that fall over. moisten that cork up. Lovely. Yeah. Right. Anyway, should we should we get on to a bit of an event review? The event review. Right. Before we start, I want to thank some people. Oh, we got for a lot some of, stuff. We got a lot of thanks to do. So I'll go down through the lot list. Yeah. Uh, and shout out who. Donated what? You sure you're gonna be right shouting that out, mate? Fuck off. <laughs> I bring it. I bring it round, so you can see as well, Reginald. That's all right. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna edit this. I'm not even gonna cut the pauses out of it because fuck you at this point. Like you wanted this. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not fucking edit. I'm just gonna click send on the cunt. Go on, him, Alan. I can't read any of that. I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> right, beer of the week camper. We supplied that. Thank you. We don't. We don't. We need don't need anything. no thanks for that. Truck Fest Southwest. So a huge shout out to Live Promotions for donating us two tickets for that. Yeah, that, I was. Fucking... I was. Yeah, a big up to them as well because I bet they get a lot of people asking for stuff, and they actually they came through. So I appreciate that. CRS. CRS building supplies. My man, big man Johnny and Emerson, you fucking legends, went in there for me paint, walked out with very expensive paint, and a fucking DeWalt radio, you legends. Yeah, big up CRS and boys. And then you got the scumbag and the basic white bitch hamper. Yeah, provided we- by, provided by us with the help of uh, uh, Euro, uh, uh, Euro EU. Uh, I can't remember their names. EU, oh, Ultra Sport, Ultra Sport, Ultra Sport EU, who provided the Pit Vipers. Thank you very much to you guys. Um, Chef James. Literally, Chef James. Yeah, Chef James himself. So massive shout out to you. Thank you, man, for supplying the uh, the Bedford Bottle Shop voucher. 
our person who must remain anonymous for the sage coffee machine oh, the secret coffee man yeah thank you secret coffee man we uh we, we can't tell anyone about secret coffee man um the first rule about secret coffee man it's is just don't talk don't about talk secret, about secret, secret coffee, coffee man. man um our day that nah, that's no nah, we don't need any thanks Two Land Rover experiences. Yeah, big up to uh, basically my old man. My yeah. old man did that. Yeah, he was, uh, you know, in the day it was his wife that died. So I said, come on, I was there rattling me tin in front of him. God, give some of your tight bastard. You're never going to use the fucking things anyway. You pretty, you didn't lose the last six. <laughs> so yeah, he gave the Land Rover experience days. The Mad Pineapple. Yeah. The uh, Oyster Knife. Swiss made Oyster Knife. Phil Barton himself. Phil Barton bidding on his own lot as well. You see <laughs> I that? think he wanted that back. Did he actually? <laughs> he's running them up. Fuck him. He's yeah. worth more than you can. Um, Sam Webster for supplying the aerial tour, which I bought. Yeah. Uh, the billing off-road show tickets and the remap from TD5. Inside, yeah. Inside. It's, yeah, big up, Alive. big up, Sam. Yeah, Thanks for getting all that squared up, mate. Um, thank you to Lou for the lorry model. Rico, JCB. Oh, yeah. The boys down at Rico. Big up to Mark. Big up to Tommy. Thank you so much for um, for putting that on. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah. Auto mover one, that. He's very keen. Mm. He's mad for it. I wanted that, but it went a bit out of my price range. <laughs> you couldn't have it all, man. Oh, no, I know. Um, Ryan Murphy and me on springs for the fly fishing and shotgun tutoring. Yeah. Massive shout out to them. Really appreciate that. Ryan came through clutch on this as well. So he was, I have so, so much respect for both of them. And of course the shotgun, the shotgun that Mule won. Yes. Mule won the shotgun. There was a big argument about that. Did you see it? It was a bidding war between Ollie Giles and, uh, Mule and, uh, Mule and, and Eddie O'Neill, I believe. Um, and Mule said, uh, Ollie was bidding, and uh, Mule screamed at him, fuck off, you cunt! <laughs> yeah, I thought he was actually going to kick off. I think <laughs> Ollie might have just been running him up anyway. He was like, it's all for a good cause! <laughs> uh, a huge shout out to Mike Quarterly for the Festival on the Hills tickets and Devon Truck Show tickets. Yeah, thanks Mike, appreciate that. Pocock's poultry for the meat hamper. George Pocock, that man's got more camel trophies than a fucking Saudi <laughs> racing yard. Hey, get off me, son! <laughs> He's some boy who won the jazz as well. He's coming down tomorrow <laughs> to pick it up. Let's fucking go. And uh, Scania Shepta Mallet. Yeah, the Scania bundle. The Scania bundle. And as for the cam, the camo hat. Yeah, the camo hat that went daft. A... Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Oh, and, then, and the Gary Glitter LP. Oh, yeah. Big Mom, thanks to Mum. Get on, Mother. <laughs> fucking Mum having a rummage round see what shit we can donate. Oh, yeah, Gary Glitter LP here. Let's fucking go. Oh, Burry bought that as well, did he? The cook can. He's some boy. And massive shout out to Chris and Ben, the fucking car flippers. Honestly, those boys. Incredible. I was. I was astounded. They drove an 11 hour round trip in one day just to drop off a Honda Jazz so we could put it in our auction. Top dinger. Came down, stayed until their lot came up and then fucking Chris, God bless him, came to the front and I was like, you do the intro, man. Him and his, <laughs> him and his fucking awesome per mullet. He was like, what do you say? He was like, look, it's, the car, it's, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> like, it is, it is <laughs> fucking, it's fucked. But you know, it's done us well. I've done 10,000 miles in it. And you're like, no, no, right, let's go. <laughs> he's like, can I, can I do the auction as well? Mate, you carry on. He was, honestly, those guys, big shout out to Chris and Ben. I have so much time. They have literally, those two, I said to them, you two guys have reinstated my faith in like you know, social media influencers. Cause I just got honest for, just and, uh, fuck it just honest, incredible. Blown, blown away blown away 11 hour round trip they drove back that night just drove all the way back to fucking uh, fucking Dalo. Dalo. Yeah. and a huge shout out to Starstruck Disco and Karaoke for doing the whole thing for nothing yep for nothing like this chariot event literally was like oh no that's how I'll do it so fucking really appreciate that man really appreciate it legends yeah and everyone, everyone else that helped like fucking Dal and Chief and obviously uh, Paul 
And yeah, literally everyone that lent a hand, everyone that fucking put her and everyone that put her hand in the pocket, everyone that bought a fucking raffle ticket, everyone that um you know, everyone bought the raffle ticket, stuck her hand up for a, even if you didn't even if you didn't win it, just sticking yeah. your hand up for an yeah. auction lot, man, it went up. It went up, <laughs> went up, went up, went up. Yeah. It was it was incredible, man. It was such a good night. And I, I wanna say uh, I'm sure I speak on behalf of Keith and just about everyone else that's listening, Marlon. I, I've made it very clear that I really didn't have that much of a hand in the organising of this thing because it was one of those things where you just sort of fucking took it and run with it and anything, most of the things I could have done, I would have just got in the fucking way and made life more difficult. Like when it comes to anything to do with merch, like, I appreciate it, Reg, but fuck off. <laughs> yeah, without Marlon, that night would not have happened. He literally did... 99.98% of everything for that night and it just everything was fucking flawless it all went off without a fucking hitch and it was fantastic it really was and it's all down to you mate at the end of the day I like I said I'm the monkey you're the organ grinder like you were the one that was fucking plowing away behind the scenes making shit work getting shit organized getting your lots done getting all the fucking it was just Honestly, mate, it's all down to you. And if there's any thanks, it's to go your way, not over here to you, because it was fucking amazing. Everyone has everyone has messaged me. I've had so many people saying fucking Marlon's auctioneering skills. Like we were all thinking, oh my fucking god. <laughs> I was god. just gonna pan out. Yeah. Even my old man my old man kept saying to me, he's like, Do you want Tom Killen to do this? Like, seriously, I know Marlon's do you want I know an actual No, no, no. Marlon says he's doing it. I'm not fucking undermining it. And what him. a fucking good job you did of it as well, mate. It, it was, was fucking I gleaming. I did my online training course. Mate, it was epic. Play fucking play. It was so fucking many spot people, like, even Snaker was like, honestly, Marlon's auctioneering. I was just fucking capsulated. I didn't even put my hand up. I was the thing busy. is, most people sort of think going, Oh, so we got this fucking spastic with a biff kip and chip like he can't even do yeah. beer in a week and all of a sudden he's like brrr, fucking spinning off this stuff on the auction's like where's this blow come from man I think I can pull skills out of my ass if I need to but there is no way in hell I was I did say to you I was like if you get stuck mate just give me a little nudge and I was like please don't get stuck because there's no way in no way in fucking hell I can do what you're doing right now I don't know it's just something I've always been interested in because like you see him speaking so fucking fast. I'm like, that'd be that is fucking cool. But mate. that's half of it there, though, mate. If you've got a genuine interest in something like that, nine times out of ten, you can fucking nail it, can't you? Like, the the oil mover messaged me, right? And he was like, he was like, I'm, you know, I was fucking great night. It's really good. And you know, I am sorry, Reg. I'm sorry that this is the end of the Doghouse podcast. But you know, what we've realised from this is that Marlon must follow his passion of becoming a Texas cattle auctioneer. And if that means the doghouse has to end, you have to, if you love something, let it go. It was amazing, man. It was so, so good. It was so good. You should be so fucking proud of yourself. Was- what I'll do is I'll send you the link to put in the episode description. Yeah. Cause the bloke does like some taste things on YouTube. Yeah. Have a fucking look. It's brilliant. It was so Blow good. your mind. You should have seen it behind the fucking behind the lectern that we had. He had this massive sheet of notes and handwritten stuff. I was like, oh my fucking god! Like this is like a serious thing. I thought he was just like, yeah, we've done a course. It'd be all right. You know, I'll rock up. I was like, oh no, there's like a lot of preps got into this. Because yes, was- my brain isn't that big, and I can't remember a lot. So like, all your filler words were there, and some numbers and openers, closers, that kind of thing. Yeah. It was it was brilliant. I thought you did so well. Yeah, well so, done, mate. That was fucking. You did a brilliant job. So many people after the auction was over came up to me. It was like, what else is being auctioned off? I was like, we're done. They're like, oh, we're not. I'm not going to get any hear anything more from Marl. I'm doing that. I was like, no, we're not. I was like, are you doing a charity auction for the next event? I was like, no, we're fucking not. No, well, no, the next event's just going to be us getting smashed. <laughs> But yeah, mate, everyone loved it. Everyone fucking loved it. Even my yeah, old man was like, fuck me, Marlon did well, did her? I was like, yeah, he did. Have a little bit of faith. Yeah, he should be proud. I did so well. Can I have a beer, please? Because yeah, my throat is. Of course is you can. Blank. Do you want another drink, Keith? You're right. Might as well be right there, mate. Yeah, yeah. I don't, well, I don't actually feel I've got any more fudge left. Are you happy with anything what, that's cold, mate? Whatever. Yeah. Demon. Yeah. Yeah, as long as it's not your bodily fluid, Reg will be all right. <laughs> What was uh? I, I love, people love the things that went wrong. So what? What? What can we get going at the start of the night before everyone turned up, Marlon? The fucking TV screens. Oh so when we were booking the place, they were like, "Yeah, so there's TVs everywhere. You plug into the interface over there, and whatever is on your laptop will be throughout the whole thing." So oh, that's banging, right? I do a lot video. 
everyone can see what's going on. It'll be constant rotation, like every... And what was weird as well is when you was at the bar, you two pair of cunts were on the big screen by the bar as well. Yeah. We didn't even so there was know that. There a camera that. on you two, and I was like, oh my God, I can't get away from them. Honestly, like, we didn't even know that. That was, that was so weird. I knew that. Reg didn't pay any attention. They said, oh, we can... <laughs> they said, we can. And I was like, yeah, don't do that. And they just did it anyway. Oh, I didn't pay no attention to that. That was no. good. Um, yeah, so two different HDMI cables into the wall. Nothing would work. You could only get two screens working out of, what was that, six, seven? And then in a last-ditch attempt... Oh, it was Paul, wasn't it? Uh, um, no, Corey, the bar manager. Um, no. Uh, Colin. No, no. I think it was Paul. Paul, I, I guess that you might have been. That might have been after I went. I can't remember. He was like, right, I'll go and find a VGA lead. So I was like, fine. We swap laptops because I had two laptops: one fucking VGA, one SCAR. Uh, not fucking SCAR HDMI. SCAR, what a move! SCAR, I've never SCAR in years. <laughs> fucking old rock on the side of the can. Jesus, um, that's PS2 territory. <laughs> SCAR lead. Fucking, I remember how big it was. You bet one pin, you couldn't get a cunt in there, could you? Fuck me. You'd be there with your hand behind that fucking girl television, like I can't get a fucking in there. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so, hey, that's, this tr- that's a slightly triggering childhood memory for me there, if you didn't realise. It's like a fucking husky version of Joe Pasquale over here tonight, isn't it? Christ. I've already had that <laughs> fucking joke, you <laughs> bastard. <coughs> so we went and got a VGA. I had to swap laptops, transfer the fucking videos over and shit. Boom. Just everything worked. Everything worked. Why? VGA is a shit it's idea. It's so old. VGA is so old. It's with the little screws, isn't it? It's like yeah. Little, yeah. So we had all that going on. That was good. Um, and then the first auction lot, I forgot what was after 70. Um, <laughs> so you had to quite quickly remind me that it was 80. Um, <laughs> but you did really well. I, 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 I can't even remember bringing you up on that. I, you, you did so well. I think I looked at you and what's fucking next? Apparently I was talking way too loud into the microphone as well. I had two people come up to me like, move the microphone away from your face. But of course, I'm so used to talking into our shores. We've got to be nice and tight and close. And they're like, it's distorting and you're so loud, it's cutting out at the back of the room. I was like, all right, sorry. Next, we'll, we'll take shores next time. Yeah, we'll take our own mics. Um, what else happened? Oh, fucking hell. I'll tell you what it did happen, though. I t- no, I'll tell you what did happen. Here we go. He's going to kick off now. Right. <laughs> So Listen, a couple of, couple of days before, on, we, had, we had a little um, conversation, and we're like, right, start at 12-ish, that'd be perfect. What time do you get there, Reg? I had a bit of a hoot. We'd done most of the fucking tables, we had half of it fucking done, I've, and this cunt just rocks up. I felt like such a cunt. I turned up at half, half two. Was it half two or half one? I can't remember. It just as well been four o'clock. Honestly, it was like, I turned up late to set up and I walked in and like, everything was done. I was like, holy fucking shit. And of course, I immediately I feel bad because Marlon has done so, so much already and I'm late to the setup. Of and course, now in manual fucking labour. <laughs> manual labour. All the tables are done. They're just blowing up balloons at this point. Marlon's just sort of like, oh, you know, we need to get a couple of tables up to set up some stuff. I was like, oh, cunt. So I'd have a, I'd have a, oh, shag, I'd have a blowout. And I, I'd had a fair blowout, not on the farm, in the kitchen. <laughs> I um, I had the dishwasher on cycle, and I got back from work at like, I can't remember, it was like quarter, quarter past 11, half 11 or something like that. Is this a category on Pornhub, is it? <laughs> no, and I fucking got... <laughs> kitchen blowouts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking hell, it was nearly me stuck underneath the fucking dishwasher. <laughs> she comes in, ooh. Go on, Reg, come on. you got a nice big pipe on you. <laughs> So it's fucking. Would you like to see my wrench? <laughs> so I was like, I got me head down for a bit, and I was, I went into the. I was like, I woke up, and I was like, I better get down there. I was like, it was only like five. Days. I fucking knew the cunt had a nap. I did have a nap, but it wasn't late anyway. I got up on time. I walked into the fucking kitchen. I just wore everywhere, and I was like, no. I was like, immediately, I'm like, right, what has gone wrong? I opened up the fucking underneath the sink. And the fucking, the, the main... The, the drip, discharge the, pipes fucking come the out. The discharge pipes just blown clean off the face. Like, he's... Because it's gotten so brittle, it's just snapped. Oh, fuck. And it has just been... Bah, oh, yeah. Pumping water out of the dishwasher. And I was like, oh, fuck me. The other dishwasher's asleep on the sofa as well. So the job's <laughs> fucked. Like, honest, I was like, oh, for 
fuck's sake. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, do you know what? It's not one of those fucking days to run down the screw fix. It's just one of those days where you've just got to make it fucking work. You should have just walked past it like you didn't even notice it. Oh, he's fucking... Well, basically, the, the repair was not that bad. The repair didn't take that it's long. It's all cleaned up afterwards. Yeah, that's job, it was on the old fucking floor, well, isn't Luckily, what... Well, yeah, that oh, fuck me. Can you imagine if I had that new floor and down? Oh, I just... I think I'd have just fucking, you know... First, first thought, burn the place Set the house on fire. Yeah, unless you burn the place <laughs> Came on insurance. I, I thought, do you know what? Fuck this. I went... I Because I've done a fair bit of repairs in the past. I got a load of those sort of rubber reducers for various things. You know what I'm on about. I grabbed a couple of them. I cut the, rings. I, I literally cut the fucking discharge, the end of the discharge pipe, the hard piece, cut it down to a nice level, put a bit of a bevel on it, got a bit of fucking work, very little washing up liquid in it, jammed a fucking reducer on there, rammed it into the fucking drain. Phone's Pete, going off in the corner, Marlon's ringing, fuck that shit. I'm still got work to do. I was like, do you know what? I've not been there when I fucking day. I didn't, didn't even know, bother ringing the gun. Didn't even <laughs> ring me. Give me Stu, didn't even ring me. And I just fucking rammed it I in there. I'm a strong, fight. independent man. I can set up tables. I, I, I couldn't disturb. find not... any fucking Jubilee clips, could I? So like, immediately. Should have given me a shout, man. I had a couple beca- down the back I became, I became like a Bush appliance repair man. I got me Leatherman, cut two fucking slices into the bit where the, the female end, fucking jammed it in there and then got a cable tie and raunched a cunt up so at least it squeezed down. Still like that now! Um, <laughs> and I was like, right, and they just had to deal with like, the, the dogs are in there like, they're like on their little desert island of a bed like, the water is rising! The water is rising! Please help. <laughs> it's like fucking Eric and Katrina's been through. <laughs> And poor Norma, like, Frank's in the corner doing the Kanye West next to Mike Myers. George Bush doesn't care about black people. <laughs> a whole bunch of immigrants crossing the channel, didn't they, going across your kitchen floor? There's a couple of dinghies coming through with rats in it, like, get out! <laughs> Honestly, I was fucking clearing up all the war and shit. I, I was like, oh, I thought fucking floorboards weren't fucked already. They ain't fucked now! Just being the man, at the, the man down at the floors. His previous sponsor of the podcast, like, got a problem with the floorboard shaggy. He's like, they'd have been fucked before that happened, mate. I was like, oh, great. So, yeah, that was that. And then I fucking rocked up down there and they nearly fucking done. I was like, oh, sorry. I don't know why. I have um, a couple of video clips that you can put together into a funny thing. I can, so. oh, you give me something to do, mate. That's all I need. One yeah. thing I was going to say, though, is the effort that people went to. For oh, the event, some you all, mate. Honestly, incredible. like I was so impressed. I was so impressed. I mean, I don't know what I was going to turn up to, and I knew that well, was the best part. Yeah, it you don't know what to expect. But when I walked in that room, and from pretty much everyone that arrived there, from the bloke—I mean, the women looked fantastic. The blokes looked fucking great. Everyone had fucking made an effort. Do you know what I mean? And like, it was just well, it was—it was a—it was, was a great place to have the event anyway. Personally, yeah, well, yeah. like I think it's the best place that it's been held so far. Bar staff and fucking turn around, mate. There, there was no waiting for drinks. No. It was no, quality. Was, the yeah. bar staff were on point. The beers and the yeah, huge shout out to Corey yeah, and his big team. Up, big up Corey and the team. Fuck me, there are some boys. Every time I went out there, he was like, "Oh, oh, look, it's Reg, another tequila rose." I was like, "Corey, no, please. <laughs> you haven't got a choice. You can." It's just a bit of a surreal moment, really. Like you sat at the Royal Bar from West, and I'm looking at you two pair of cunts stood up the fucking thing. Like, fucking hell, this is like what the fuck are we doing here? This is like this is a professional outfit. Yeah. You try being on the other Bullshit. end of it at the front there. Me and Marlon are like, oh my <laughs> God. Well, yeah, I remember seeing you, when it? I walked up and you just stood there all of a fucking different. I went, Red, you'll be all right, mate. And at the end of the night, he was like, oh, thank fuck for that. Remember Fair just fucks. before the fucking auction started and I looked up and I was fuck, Reg, what the fuck have we done? I was like, I don't know, mate. That day, do you know this? You don't speak, I don't think I told you this. That day... Saturday, that was the day three years ago we recorded our first episode. Was it? Yeah, that was the, that was the day we recorded our very first episode. Fucking hell. How weird is that? Look at this shit show now. I know. But the, it's just like, it always continues to grow. And like the one, and you know, it was like, I met some fucking great people on Saturday evening, like people I've never met before. Yeah. You know, and like, again, every event that has been held by you guys everyone's always very hospitable, very like accommodating. Everyone's all happy to talk and chat and it's fucking brilliant. I don't think there's, you wouldn't just walk up, if you walked up to someone's like, you right, mate, how you getting on? Yeah, yeah, sound. There's none of this like weird shit from back where I used to live where they'd fucking stab you or fucking like, you know, 
Nick your money or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Undrawn and quartered. But you know, like you, <laughs> white boy, give me up, white boy. <laughs> we, we've gone from like you know having a bit of a booze cruise down Wells High Street to yeah, literally. being up on the top of Shepton in some fucking pub having beers, and next thing you're at the Royal Bar from West in Shepton Mallet in the where Thatcher does it Suite. End? Where does it end? In fucking suits. Three piece suits, fucking girls with ball I, gowns. I would have put my fucking... three piece suit on, but I didn't fit into my waistcoat. Mate, you look really good. I was, exp- I was like, oh, Marlon's gonna be in fucking it, jeans. It's just, it's and like a check shirt. <laughs> and I seen you, I was like, mate, you look a million dollars. <laughs> mate, I just sat at the back watching, and look, I took everything in and thought, fucking hell, this is just, it's, it's brilliant. Mate, mate, it was Absolutely fucking, fucking brilliant. Mental. It was. I don't do stress, and I don't do nervous. I never have. I was like. I spoke at, I did a seven minute best man speech at Mule's wedding. Wasn't it? Everyone's like, you're nervous. I was like, absolutely fucking not. I'm going to boss this. Did a fucking eulogy at my mum's wedding. I was like, you're going to be okay and hold it together. I was like, of course, I'm going to be fucking fine. This is like stand up. And before me and Marlon were there, and it was was just me and Marlon in an empty room, and I was fucking bricking it. And then, like, people started coming in. I started to ease up a little bit. And when a few people rolled in, I was like, oh, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. And we, you could tell how fucking nervous I was. I was drinking water, like, for about two <laughs> hours. All I drank was water until the end of the fucking Well, you all- stood at the front door when I rocked up, and you were putting a bottle lid on and off and on and off and on and yeah. off. And I was like, are you all right done with that, mate? Or not? <laughs> yeah, riddled <laughs> with it. Fucking riddled with it. I was. And then, like, when we're at the front and you just look out at this absolute sea of people... And the worst part I kept thinking was, I was like, this is a fucking fraction of our listenership that are here tonight. And I was like, if I can sit in this fuck, I, I just kept telling myself, if I can sit in that bar and do it like it's nothing once a week, you know, just chat and shit, I can do this. I can, I don't know how you were feeling, mate, but I was fucking shitting myself. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't, I don't think I was shitting myself. I was just really fucking nervous. I, like, I wasn't... I was, I was... I didn't get like... I wasn't going to stumble over me words and get a stage fright. I just pulled it out of my ass. But I was just like, oh my fucking... Everyone's looking at you. And you're just like... This, this is the biggest crowd I've ever spoken to. And, well, my mum's... No, I think my mum's funeral was bigger. But like, they're not expecting anything. They're just expecting me to go, my mum was great. I really loved her. Now she's dead. That's sad. Um... <laughs> But this, I was just like, oh, God, this stuff. Oh, fuck. fuck. Yeah. Yeah, it was mental. It the f- just, I tell you, it blew my fucking mind. What an atmosphere. It always say it every time. I don't know about you, Keith, but on. But it humbles me every yeah. fucking time. I it's just not become... a fucking following. My... It's a fucking community. My ego just gets like smaller and smaller every time we do this because I'm like, oh, I'm just so humble. I'm just so grateful for all these people being here and just like coming together. Because when we like, let's be deadly honest, let's be frank about it. When we were in the planning stages of it, we were shitting ourselves. We looked at the overheads that this was going to come like, with and, and we were like, we are going to like to make this make sense and to pay for everything we've got to pay for and take money out of the ch- ticket sales for charity. I was like, it's got to be £30 a ticket. It's got to be. Like, we'll do an early bird special, but like, it's going to have to be £30 a ticket. And me and you were like, no one's going to no fuck, gonna fuck gonna pay that. No one's going to pay that. No one's going to fucking pay that. And it sold out. And it fucking sold out. And we were like, oh my God. As we were expecting maybe, so should I say some figures of things? Uh, don't <clears> give a final figure because no, we're, oh no. we're, not, we're not there yet. We haven't got that. No, I wasn't going to. It's, so it's mega though. Holy in shit, in order mega. for us to break even, we had to do 150 tickets. Yeah. I thought we were going to do 200 tops. Well, we thought 175, 200, didn't we? We didn't think we were going to make anything out of the ticket sales. It yeah. was all going to be on the auction and the raffle that we we're going to be able to raise some money. Yeah. Yeah, we did 300 tickets. Yeah. Well, 290 something. And then, yeah, we literally ran out of bands, as you as you might have gathered. But yeah, it was... Because everyone's getting little cocks drawn their hands. Everyone or that forgot they... a fucking... You know, everyone I've... that forgot a band, people like Gorgeous George. Got a cock drawn on their hand by me. And I was like, this is... God bless the security guys. Fucking absolute legends. That every time someone didn't have a ticket, they come over and find us, but this guy hasn't got a ticket. And I'd see them, but like, I know he's bought a ticket. He's just forgotten it. So you get the mark of Kane, which was just a cock and balls drawn on your hand. Impermanent um, marker. Impermanent marker. Everyone who, you're, you're a cock if you've got your ticket. 
But one fucking job, you useless cunts. And we held out till January as well to send them out. You still managed to forget them, you fucking idiots. Bless you. But no, it was it was it was mad. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't. I really, I thought we'd like everything. The problem is we're growing so fast. Everything we do, we have to stretch ourselves razor thin. And we're like, if this doesn't it, work, we're work. fucked. Yeah. If this doesn't work, we're fucked. But that, if this doesn't work, we go broke. But that's the thing as well. Like where I was sat at the back by the main door, sort of like watching what was going on. And, you know, we sat there looking forward at you two doing your bit. You've got the auction going on and you've got people there that you've met or know of, do you know what I mean? Spoken to back on a lot of faces I've never seen before as well. And everyone's all suited and booted. Everyone's doled up to the nines. Everyone looks fucking smart and fresh and crisp. Do you know what I mean, it's, it's proper. And they're all raising these paddles up. And it's like, can I get fucking £250? Can I get 260 and Next thing you're up to like £400, £500. And you're thinking, fucking hell, this isn't like, like, you know, you're not sitting there thinking this auction is going to be like 50 quid, 60 quid for this item. Like, we got hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Like, and yeah. you're thinking, fucking hell, these. Like, there's a lot of skin in the game here and, like, people are bringing something to this yeah. event and, like, people mean business as well. And yeah. this is, like... People whatever this is do fucking, fucking business. This is proper. And I was thinking, fucking, this is brilliant. That Absolutely fight brilliant. fight over Phil Barton's lorry. Yeah, that went down. That's fierce. And the fucking... What Tom made, and fucking... <laughs> Alfie John's message just before the event was like, I'm walking home with that coffee machine. I don't care what it costs. And he fucking did, no! Fucking did. <laughs> Old Kerno connection. Ah, the raffle people. A huge thank you yes. to my mother-in-law, Julie. Absolute saints. Shelley and Vimmy. Vim, Vim told me, he was like, I've had the best time. I've had the <laughs> best. I've just been fucking grabbing people by the neck, yeah. saying, buy a ticket. And they're like, of course. It's the easiest sales pitch in the world. <laughs> That's it. We're all scumbags. It oh, was... they emptied my wallet pretty quick. <laughs> they, sold the, they sold the raffle books out, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. because people come at me, where do I get raffle tickets? I'm like, there are none left. They're gone. And I didn't think yeah. that was going to happen. I thought we were going to be scratching around, being like, please buy a raffle ticket for <laughs> come a quid. On. And it was like, yeah. Do you know what the, fu right? you know what the funniest part was? Was there was fucking, um, I, was, I think it was Shelly was wandering around with this bucket. And she was like, wandering around with it. My sister collars me and she's like, do you think we should go get that bucket put somewhere safe? I was like, why? She's like, I think there's about three grand in it. <laughs> yeah, some of them look pretty heavy because there's one left on the table. I think it was that your mother-in-law Julie, was going around with a bucket. I'm going for a wee, I'll be back in a minute. Bucket, sir. Oh my like, God. Sam, we'll look after that. Don't worry about it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> fuck it. Oh was like, God. Went to go pick it up. I was like, fuck it. I was some weight in there, mind. Yeah, fucking man. If that was copper. I would have been laughing. <laughs> Have you got the total for the raffle? Uh, I do, actually, yeah. Um, so we haven't got an actual... I'm sorry. We haven't got a complete um, total. We will We will by the time this episode comes out, but we don't at the point of recording. So I can, can but apologise for that. But I can give you a few little figures that are fucking amazing. Um, so the total for the raffle was... Just, just the raffle alone was... Five thousand three hundred and sixty-eight pounds. That was just Fuck what was man. in those little Fair buckets fight. that were wrapped, and the, the what was on the the little little pots on the bar, and the buckets that were going around. Five thousand three hundred and sixty-eight pounds. That was insane. John was really fucking funny, right? So my sister was like, "Oh, we better go get one of those buckets. It's pretty full. We better go put that in a locked vehicle." So it's not lingering around in here. It's a lot of money if anything nefarious would have happened or if it got misplaced or, you know, whatever. Which, you know, I'm sure it wouldn't. I it's, don't think it would have been the case, it, would it really? Absolutely but, not. But it's no. better to err on the side of caution. So my, my sister takes it, takes this bucket and goes outside to go put it in a, in a fucking car. And she gets chased out by security. Excuse me! <laughs> <laughs> Wake him over and find us. Like, Girl, she's run off with the bucket. I was like, sorry, she's the one running the marathon. She's like, it's okay. It's her <laughs> mum that died. Da, da, da. Yeah. God bless him. The total from ticket sales that we've already put in the um, just, just given, just given, yeah, is two thousand eight hundred and sixty pounds and twelve pence. Yeah. So I had a little look up on Gabrielle's just given, um, and if you click on the MND Motor Neurons Disease Association, um, them London Marathon um, fundraisers from twenty. Well, I say twenty four supporters. Obviously, we put. The, we put the majority in from the ticket sales, so really asked from 300 people. She is second. She is the second highest fundraiser. And I'm not going to lie, not all the money is in there yet. Yeah. 
I've got a feeling she's going to be number one. She, I, I, well, and it will be by a fucking hair's width between them. So I'm like, we are going to fucking get there. We are going to get there. We are going to make. We it. will be number we one. Will be. She's the no, like. It's it's going to be. Yeah, it's mad. Like last time she ran the Leeds Marathon, she was the second highest uh, fundraiser for a single person running the chat running the marathon. That was behind Charlie. No, third. She was behind. Um, Lee Burrow's wife, who obviously who the marathon was for, for Lee Burrow's from um from the um the 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 Leeds uh, the Leeds rugby team, and um Charlie uh, cheery cheerful Charlie from um from Clarkson's Farm, he ran yeah. as well, and she was the third behind him. She was the third highest fundraiser for the whole fucking marathon, which is mad. Yeah, so thanks so, to you, pieces of shit. I know it's very humbling, very very humbling. Right, should we uh should, should we cut to a break? Yeah, because I need a piss and a throat break right before we cut to a break a massive shout out to the sponsor of this episode truck temptations yes they're back listen up everyone you know i know what you lorry drivers are like you know you get a new lorry and you're just you immediately you like the shiny shit you like the shiny stuff immediately your brain is like right i got some horn blasters up there i'm gonna have to have a fucking headboard i need to have some fucking big lights on the bottom of my bar there the problem is you buy all this shiny shit, you spend all this fucking money, and then you're like, oh, shit, i got to mount this. Yeah, how the fuck do I do How that? am I going to mount this? And do you know what? Like we said previously, if you start taking a Dremel or a drill or a step drill to your boss's new 170 grand lot Volvo, he's going to get a little Don't bit twitchy. Pissed. None of this stuff fits from factory. You know, it's all a pain in the ass. However, Truck Temptations fabricate specific stuff that fit the mounting except uh, mounting brackets that fit all of these accessories designed to go in all the image original mounting holes so utilizing holes that are already there so you're not cutting into abs plastic you're not drilling holes in the fucking roof and you're not going to upset the boss when you've when you've had to drill five fucking holes to miss it and then chuck the load of fucking sealant in there and he goes oh that fucking 170 grand lorry that is you stupid bastard so negate all the fucking hassle just buy the correct bracket and you just mount it on straight away. So you can um, check. Oh, it, it, I cannot tell you from, from fitting how many, loads of different oh, yeah, shit. EBay shit that yeah. you've bought in the year, over the years, Marlon. Just buying a bracket, which is designed specifically for that job. Can you imagine just getting Hold something on. and you just line it up with the holes that are already there? And you all the holes. The fucking screws up. It's like fucking magic. Imagine. Imagine. That is like, it's one of those jobs, isn't it? We think, oh, sorry, I'll buy that and I'll fit that on a Saturday afternoon after I finish the wash down. And in reality, you're there till fucking eight o'clock at night trying to work out. Mounting the those cunting air horns on my transporter. Nobody makes the right bracket. I had to make it me fucking self. He said, no, you imagine, oh, you sat there with a sheet of fucking st- uh, three, uh, 314 stainless trying to bend it and cut it and make it look nice. And it's just not going to happen, is it? It'd be, save yourself the hassle. Buy yourself the correct accessory mounting brackets from Truck Temptations. Available exclusively through McCallum's Truck Styling. The link's in the episode description. The link will be in the bio. It's all there. Yeah, it's a massive shout out to Truck Temptations for uh, sponsoring this episode exclusively for Volvos. Remember that? Right. Uh, we're going to go Scania's grab about drink of a week and we will be back with you shortly. We love you all. Bye bye. Um, we're back and it's time for drink of the week. Now it's a very special drink of the week. We were given this by, uh, one of the main sponsors of the episode, the auto mover. He is, uh, he was on about it last time he popped down, but, um, we couldn't, we couldn't, we literally just couldn't find time to, uh, exchange goods. So, uh, he has got me something that I mentioned on a, on a podcast way back when, um, it's called Patron XO Cafe. Now, it is coffee tequila, and I love tequila, and I love coffee. Um, and unfortunately, they discontinued it, and everyone kicked up a big fuss because they In discontinued 2021, it. In 2021, they discontinued it. Yeah, for it. no good reason. Like Everyone was like, it's one of the best. Everyone loved it, and they just discontinued it. So, of course, the price skyrocketed. So you can't buy this now for under about 90 quid. Uh, yeah. I know, and it's like that's like the low end. You can go if, as soon as that runs out there, like up there and under eighty. Um, and he, I think it was a dear friend. Was, Would you get one ninety, two hundred, two hundred? 
It was a good friend of uh, the auto mover had said like, oh, they're discontinuing it, so you should get some. And much like myself, the auto mover forgot, but his mate bought a whole load of bottles of it. And he was like, I heard you saying that you've never got hold of any and you're a tired cunt. So uh, I've got a bottle for you. I was like, you're some boy, Sam, some fucking boy. So yeah, we got the auto mover for sending us the Patron XO Cafe. I've never had this before and I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, right. Malone Patty Forever 2. Could you please read the marketing bullshit? Knock into a sandwich and I'll take with like. That is the wrong button. A liqueur composed of 100% blue algarve tequila and pure coffee essence. Patron Exo Café tastes strongly of coffee whilst maintaining a high alcohol percentage. Unlike other coffee liqueurs, it is not too sweet, has a real taste of coffee and maintains an edge. I'm just going to, I'm just pouring the last one out here, boys. I do apologize for the creaky stall. That will be fixed, but I assume you've already got used to it by now. Right. Let's see what you think. Wow. It smells so strong. Jesus. Roll that in your glass, Reg. Looks like syrup, mate. Well, it's not. But that's it, a, look at, that's a that's, thick boy. That's the alcohol. That's there. thicker than soya sauce, that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> right. Holy yeah. shit. All of a sudden, my throat feels a bit better. Good Lord. That hits different, doesn't it? <clears throat> Initially, you get that. Boom. Like, you get that. This is really going to hurt, but it never comes. So, so smooth. And then going right down. at the end, you get that, a little bit of warmth, a little bit of buzz down through your throat. But the coffee flavor is just incredible. How many coffee flavor things have we done? We've done, there are many. We did that. Uh, Jägermeister cold brew, Brackalong. Yeah. I was expecting great things and was really nah. disappointed. But the coffee comes through really, really good on that. Like, if you put that glass up to your nose and take a good sniff, oh, yeah. no, it you burn the back of your nostrils. Oh. So like, when you when it first hits your lips, you almost got that instant burn that just gets taken away by that sweetness. Yeah. And that smooth... It's, it, I'd say it's definitely more smooth than sweet. Yeah. It, when it was the last time you had a smooth tequila? Smooth, tequila just mate, hurts. I fucking hate tequila. It just hurts. All it does so is that, it just That's pain. fucking nice. That is gorgeous, man. That's a proper sipping drink as well. Imagine that. It makes over, you all warm and fuzzy inside. It makes it all warm and fuzzy. I've just been slamming that fireball this week. Just like, just like dropping out in the old fucking coffee in the morning. <laughs> like, just get me get a little buzz on for work. Oh, that is. I think that's when you know you've become an alcoholic. <sighs> no. I'm just, uh, alcohols go to meetings, drunks go to parties. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that is so good. What, where, where are we at on it then? It's a nice sipper. I feel a bit bad because we're all, me and you are trying it when we're ill, but I'm really enjoying it. Like, <laughs> regardless, it's so strong that I can taste it through my fuck taste buds. It's, it's all right. It's all right. It's it is very very smooth. The initial hit is like bam yeah, in your fucking it's, face. But it's going 30, down when I saw it, it's thirty five percent, I was burn. like, that's gonna be fucking strong. But it's all right. I'm I'm four. I'm at a five. What about you, Keith? For someone who don't like tequila, that is a five. Yeah, man. Oh, all day long, mate. Like obviously, everyone loves a coffee in the morning, don't they? I've never Need been. It. I've never been one of those that has like coffee flavored drink. Like you know when you get like. You get stuff with like coffee hints in it or yeah, like yeah. coffee flavoured food, yeah. coffee cake. I fucking despise that shit. Do you? Oh, mate, I just don't like it. Can't, but I love a good coffee in the morning. I need I need a coffee in the morning before I've spoken to anyone. Tequila. I hate tequila. I'm the Sambuca man, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am but, the Sambuca man. I, I come, come from Daniel, Daniel Bay. Bay. And do I you play? <laughs> but that is fucking gorgeous. That, that is... Like, if you was to like go in and go, here, have a sniff of that, you go, fuck, I ain't drinking that, mate. That's way too strong. That is punchy. That's a punchy nan in the face shit, isn't it? But once it hits your lips and rolls down the back of your throat, you get that like so a, you, nice. get, you get that initial hit of tequila and your whole body like tenses up thinking, I know what's coming. It just goes into that PTSD thing of fuck and then it doesn't it's come. Gone. It's just pure smooth coffee. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful. Brilliant. Nice. Beautiful. Really, really Huge. nice. So that's the 10 It's a out great of 10. Mexican a liqueur. It's, it's wonderful. Amazing. I've been friends with Patron for many years. <laughs> 
I let the them auto throw movers, the wall. The auto move is going to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to buy bottles of this. Yes. And the sponsors will pay for it. <laughs> Beautiful guy. Speaking of sponsors, big up to the auto move and a sponsor <laughs> of this podcast. Massive shout out to him. Listen up, scumbags. I don't care if you're a, a private buyer, a private seller, or whether you're actually working in the motor trade. Having a decent, reliable bloke that can transport anything with wheels around the countryside is invaluable, especially when you're not worrying about some fucking great big low loader turning up in your yard. He's not there on time. He's early. He's late. Oh you know, fucking hell, Shag. He's beating said, the roof off the it cunt. It says on the roster that it's meant to be a bloody smart car. I ain't got room for a fucking Range Rover on the back of here. You're not going to get that treatment with the auto movie. You're a designated load. You've got live tracking of where your vehicle is. You've got full walk around videos. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you're a private buyer or a private seller. You know, if you're selling a car, you can offer free tra you know free tra free transport or transport included in the sale with the auto mover you should look up getting someone to to do designated and reliable vehicle transport for yourself and if you're in the motor trade and you're dealing in the you know car auctions or you're dealing in you know getting cars shipped around to different dealerships you know having someone who you can rely upon who's going to be there when they say they're going to be there and is not going to knock the load about it's invaluable it's worth the wait especially when it's you know if you're dealing with 20 30 40 grand 50 grand hey, 100 thousand pound cars you know you see something like i love watching his instagram stories because you see like an, you uh, don't some, what's going to be on next you know, clapped out ldv with a fucking 720s <laughs> mclaren on the back and the thing <laughs> is overloaded barely got a strap around it and it's bouncing around on the back of it you think what on earth are you doing there's nothing like having somebody that knows what they're doing, professional, reliable, insured, and just, you know, just generally an all-round sound guy. He was at the event on Saturday. Yeah, loads of people met him. Oh, funniest fucking story. Yeah, check out the auto mover. Link in the description, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, the funniest fucking story about <laughs> blah, the blah, blah. Sorry, Sam. Yeah, He's a bit of a cunt. Everyone, by this point, everyone fucking knows. <laughs> it's just like... You know, everyone's lying as tech, tech, tech tips. Yeah. Him and D-Brand have the same relationship that we, us and the auto mover have. D brand just like they they do like an ad read and D brand just make him say real wild shit. He's like, here, look, buy this new phone case that D brand have made. Just a stretched out pictures of Linus's face, and he's like, <laughs> they've paid me to say this, so I have to say it. Um, the I was I was having a piss. I mean, the auto mover in the toilet, and he was he was. He was oh, just, is that how he gets his discount? <laughs> that's how he gets his discount. Shaking you off. We were in there having a piss. Like I. Bless you, Shag. I can't remember your fucking name for loving the money. I'm, I do apologize. And he was, I was having a piss and we were chatting. And May goes up to the auto mover and just goes, Do you know who that is? That is Reg from the doghouse. And he's famous. You know who you're talking to? And I turned around to him and said, Shag, you know who that is, don't you? And he goes, No. He said, That's the auto mover. And he was like, Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what have I said is your move? Can the we boys, go back to holding each other's dicks now? <laughs> the boys are going to lose the podcast. I've ever said your move. They have no money. <laughs> I do apologize. I can't remember your name for love and money. I'm so ill. <laughs> but yeah, fucking yeah. Check out the auto mover. Uh, put um, ITDH in the vehicle description for 10% off. Massive shout out him for sponsoring this episode. And thank you for the Patron. This is going to take pride of place on the shelf here. And be my little sip and drink for when I'm sad. <laughs> Which is now. That boy ain't gonna last you long, is it? No, no, not this week, mate. <laughs> not this fucking week. We're, we're going to the... I'm not going to say it now, because oh, fucking the, the, the masses did ascend on us. But we got a lot to do this weekend, and we need to get better real quick. Um, I'm going to sleep. It's going to be fine. It's going to be beautiful. 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 Wonderful. Yeah, it was... Um, uh, just on more about the event and the charity auction that we did. It was, it was, like I said before, it was so fucking humbling. It was so humbling. It was just, I love it because what I love the most about it is you get guys come up because different. It was a bit different with the homeman. I had a lot of time for going at the home and it was great. We had a great time up there. But the only problem was it was also open as a pub, so I felt a bit, a bit, a bit tentative about going up to people and just being like, oh, mate, thanks for coming, you know, because you don't know if they're there for yeah. us. Or they just drink there every fucking Friday just, night. Yeah, so like, I, they might, I felt a bit bad because there might have been people there that thought, oh, fucking Reggie Marlon, but useless cunts who walked straight past, looked at me, walked straight past me, but I'm like, I didn't know if you were there for this or, but that do, 
I was just like, everyone. I was like, I know you're all here for the fucking doghouse and I fucking love you for coming. Every single one of you. But yeah, it was, it was, it, like I say, it always feels like a wedding because As we tried to get round everyone. My, I felt, I felt kind of, the only people I felt bad for was like my mates, like Mule and Luke and Marcus and Spunkle and like all the boys because, and like yourself, Keith and Jilo, I barely had fucking time to speak because I was like, you know, them cunts get to see me all the time. <laughs> I was like, well, I've, got, I've got, it's like a wedding. You've got to get around everyone, yeah. say thank you, say hello. Uh, yeah, it was, it was epic. And it feels like a wedding because your feet don't touch the ground all night. It's over way too quickly. And you feel like you've seen everyone and no one, if you know what I mean. But and I you, f- you blink and it's fucking half past one. Yeah, it's fucking, it was so good though. It was so, so well worth it. It was, uh, I want to I want to give a massive shout out to the fucking, to, um, to Cormac, Corey, Lorraine and Colin and all the guys that work there for realistically taking a chance on us because they'd heard some rumours about us. Like, I don't know where they come from, but like, you know, you know, it's like... Jealous people. I don't know whether it's jealousy or what, but... Word misinformed. Had, word had gotten around and they'd... So we had a couple of meetings with them and they'd said, look, we've heard that you got kicked out of your last place that you've done events at because you'd smashed the place up and you weren't allowed back. So now you've turned around to us. And I was like, well, look, that's not the case. We're good as gold. Like, you know, take a chance. If you take a chance on us, we'd like this to be a good working relationship going forward. And they were like, yeah, it's fine. That's fine. I was like, well, look, we have the young farms down here. They smashed the fuck out of place. <laughs> and we still have them back because they spend good money. And I just want to say thanks to them for accommodating us. And they were fantastic. And it was a really, really good night. And yeah. Security was on point. They were so sound. I loved them. Mm. They were fucking brilliant. Yeah, they're all sound, all of them. I couldn't, I can't thank them enough for putting on such a great night and being so hospitable to us. Because literally, we're like, yeah, we're just two. We literally came up with a, we're just two guys that just want to do an event. And they were like, you know, much like everyone else we've ever been, like, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, you're definitely going to sell all those tickets. There's going to be loads of people. Sure. And I was like, please um, believe me. <laughs> no one, <laughs> no one has believed don't us. I think Lorraine quite understood at the beginning what we were trying to do and how many people would be i was like please believe me when i tell you there are going to be this many people please prepare for this many she's people like, yeah so we're gonna to have to you are to pay a deposit I'm like yeah shack yeah. send a bank details we'll do it now uh, literally right now like it's not a problem like please just please just get us in the fucking diary this has to happen like, oh, okay thinking like this is gonna be a shit not not a shit show but they're gonna be like 10 feet they're gonna right. tell us like 310 people are gonna rock up and they were like holy fucking shit. how many tickets you sold i was like 250 she's like holy mother oh, of yeah. god yeah <laughs> <laughs> bump that up to 300 shag yeah a uh, big up to all of you guys as well that came because like we, you know, we always say like, guys, come on, like best behavior and that. Cause we want all, you know, if, if we fuck it up, we're not allowed back. But honestly, fucking amazing. Amazing. You credit yourselves. All of you. It was, it was like, I bet you spent more than young farmers and were better behaved. So like, we mm. literally at the end of the night, I had a chat with the managers and that. And I was like, are we okay to come back? And they're like, absolutely. So yeah, it was, it was- uh, one it was, night. It was, it was a great night. I was really, 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 I was really just, I don't know, just I feel, walked away thinking, oh, fucking hell, what an amazing thing. What an amazing thing. I that, think the best thing about that place as well is, <clears throat> not only where it is, but not the size of it as well. It's not like, you pr- you, you filled it well. The, we bar, did, yeah. the bar was full. The dance floor was full. The tables were full. Were the tables set up okay? Yeah, mate. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it wasn't like, well, good, I good personally... Good help. <laughs> There wasn't like people not knowing where to go, and you wasn't like too far from anyone. If that makes sense, yeah, like so, it. like other everything's places, there. Yeah, so like if we've been down in Wells before on a night out, you'll find that fucking ten people have gone to one other pub, and then there's like people in a beer garden, people at a bar, and it's all kind of segregated a little yeah, bit. You lose you know? people along the way. That's it. But like here, you're all kind of contained into one place. Yeah. but it, it's nobody's gonna fuck off because it's in the middle of fucking nowhere that's no that's can't yeah. irritate any neighbours because yeah. there is fucking no one and like where we've been before for like the booze ups like bit local to here like I remember when we had Josh Beer come down and done the music yeah and I remember chatting to him and he's like yeah I'm gonna play this song I was like I'm buzzing for it but I was stuck at the bar trying to get a fucking drink and I kind of missed out on what was going on I couldn't hear what was going on and it was a bit like oh, it's a bit shit but there you could come away from the dance floor and you're still at the bottom. You still hear the music because yeah. the fucking speakers are there as well. It goes around the whole place. It was fantastic. It was fucking brilliant. Yeah. Like absolutely fucking Very brilliant. Very good venue. I hope 
like the plan is we're like obviously we've literally just finished this one but we know we need to jump on it quick we're hope, obviously hoping to do a summer one down there as well um yeah, let just, us know do you want dj karaoke or do you want a live band yeah marlon's got his own things that he definitely wants us <clears throat> banging on about for like two years we're gonna yeah, do me and jukes have got this big plan you have to find out. But yeah, that'll be sick down there in the summer. The good thing about it is smoking terrace. And all them doors open up as well. Oh, yeah. it's going to be gorgeous. They man. open right the way up, don't they, in the summer? Like, yeah. I've been down there. Like, was like, uh, like truck show. Yeah. Everything's all opened up. It's fucking amazing. that will be epic. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, so we'll get something sorted for the for the summer as well. We're still in the, That is probably something we're going to be doing this week before the episode comes out, hopefully, if we can get a date nailed. Um, but yeah, it'd be sick. I'm really, I'm just really happy. We've, uh, I'm, I just, it's weird. Like every time we do it, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's, yeah, I really appreciate all the guys that come. They're like, they come out like, Oh, I've listened since like episode three. But I've never come to one of these before. And I'm so happy I've come now. And I'm like, mate, why didn't you come in the first, like the first one? This is like, we've come to like, you should have seen where we started in a little bar <laughs> crawl in fucking Wells with like 50 people just fucking about. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of people out there as well that have like, I mean, I've spoken to and they've obviously messaged in and said like, how did the event go? And I'm like, you know, it was brilliant. Like, you know, you come down and there's always like, I appreciate people have got lives and people have got things going on. There yeah, might yeah, be certain absolutely. things come up you can't make it. But if you've never been to an event before and the next event comes up, save the date, put yeah. things in place, get yourself a babysitter, get someone else to go to your nan's funeral, like whatever you got to do. Like a stand Make it happen. In. Yeah. Like, you know, get, get a doppelganger to go to. Like, you know. <laughs> that's that's the but thing as whatever well. Whatever it is, just get yourselves down there. It is fucking brilliant. And like, you can talk to everyone and everyone that's down that's there. It. As I said earlier, it's not like a bunch of people. It's an actual community. We're all relatively like-minded. I mean... If you listen to this... Some we're, like we're Scania's, all... some like Volvo's. <laughs> some people are right, some people are wrong. Yeah. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I had an absolute fucking whale of a time and I appreciate you guys having us come down there. Like, I fucking loved it. It was brilliant. Like, met some new people, spoke about all crazy different oh, that, things. Do you know what I mean? Like, everything. Well, that's it. Everyone comes from a different background, a different way of life, but you've always got one thing in common and that was the beauty of it, you know? Like, chatting to your man from the Sam from the Auto Mover, like, fucking hell, what a, what a boy he is. Like, so Scott as well, top lads. He, I have never met- seen... Scott Lawson, the real oil man, our Scottish friend that drove from Aberdeen. I've never seen a man be so drunk for so long. He was drunk for hours. I mean, Mate, smashed. the Scottish can drink. Oh my God. I went out, like, when we started the auction, he was smashed. And I was like, oh, fucking Scott. This is, I, I felt kind of bad because I was like, oh, Scott, you're going to be on the fucking floor in like an hour's time. No, no. no. He was there to the end, just wild and out. He was fucking oh, come here, Reggie, you god. Just lifting me off the ground. Hey, I'm a fucking Aberdeen. Turned up in a kilt as well. He was That's honestly, a fucking proper touch. I've never I was astounded. Like from fucking from like half past seven to one o'clock in the morning. That man was smashed and he just didn't stop. I loved it. Fucking I loved- hero. Yeah, but the best bit is like you talk to these people, and then next thing you're having like your own little conversations. Then you're organising to do things with them as well. Like yeah. you know, like literally, was, we're talking about putting together a sim day now, like for a, a doggo sim day, like for shooting and that, which would be great. I mean, obviously, I'm just talking about it at the moment, just trying to get some plans in. Yeah, you can organise that. But, <clears throat> well, I'll just I I will. Uh, I'm great at delegation, Marlon. <laughs> I'll probably just be like, so I'll organise I'll probably, that. I'll, no, I'll just be like, Jack, Dano, you guys know some people. <laughs> you can get on that. Do a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just rock up. <laughs> but yeah, it was like, like thing is, people say like, oh, you know, I've never been before. I don't gonna know anyone. But like, you think about it, Matty Pickford, like, just as an example, he comes to like one of our very first ones, and he didn't know no fucking person. No, he's like nice. a staple of every single one. Yeah. Everyone's like, Matty, yeah, you just got. There are loads of you like Digger, Matty, yeah, Jukes, yeah, all the OGs that yeah. come to the very first Dirty one, like Dan, yeah, yeah. Still Dano, does. Jack, Hector, yeah. uh, Kinger, all the boys, like, and uh, 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 Dirty, yeah, Dirty Diesel and that, like, all come to the fucking... Only Charles. Yeah, all come to the very first ones, and now they're just, like, staples of every fucking event we do. And it's, yeah, it's great. So just come, and next time we do one, just fucking, just come along, because it's fucking brilliant. It's so, so good. Yeah. It's fun. We'll call you a cunt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. And then, like, you're sitting there networking with these people as well. So, like, say, chatting to all these different... Like, I was talking to Eddie the other day, like, you know, I met Ryan through the podcast. 
And I talk to the guy now like I've known him my whole life. Yeah. But now I'm networked with him and I've got like, we go, we've got shooting stuff coming up. You know, we're going away on holiday together and you're meeting all these different people and they're like, yeah, come on up here, come and see us here, come and do this, come and do that. And you think, fucking hell, like there's only 365 days in the year. Like I'm running out yeah. of days now. Honestly, like, if I look at my fucking calendar now, I'm fucked till middle of the year. We'd be living quiet lives if it wasn't for this, wouldn't it? We'd be living our little it's suburban brilliant. lives, Marlon. We're having a go out for a, a pint a couple of times yeah. a week and then we started this fucking madness. But it's, and then you'll get people that have never met, like they may have listened to one or two episodes, they've heard about this this event, they've come down, they've met someone, they started talking and then someone may have found a job, someone's done this and it's, it's fucking brilliant. It's just bringing people together, isn't I, it? It's even like Chiefs met people through this. So Ryan's missus, Stacey, they talk all the fucking time. Just like... <laughs> It doesn't stop, does it? Oh, I, I, I ru- fucking love Ryan. <laughs> I rocked up on my missus, sat down, and she's chatting to some girl at the table, and that was it. Gone. I was like, so, happy days. Turn up, see you later. That yeah. was it, whole night. Yeah, yeah, same, same with mine. In. Uh, every time I see my uh, fucking Mark Hornby just comes up, gives me a massive hug, and I just feel like such a bitch. Because he's like <laughs> seven so foot tall. nine. Come here, Rich. I'm like, ah, this is what my <laughs> wife feels like. Am I about to get fucked? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> take you in the toilets as well. <clears throat> yeah, it's just, it's, I love yeah. it. And the thing is, people like, I had so many messages from people saying, thanks for putting on a great night. Thanks for putting on a great night. And I really, really appreciate every single one of them. Like I said, all thanks should be directed to Marlon, not to me. But like, I keep telling people, like when I see them, I'm like, we're just the glue. That's all we are. We are, but the vessel and the glue. We That's all we are. We just bring you all together, put you in a room. You are. That's it. It's nothing to do with us. Like you guys are the you guys are the what make this thing. So like we're just the glue that brings it all together. You guys are what make it, not us. We're just like two fucking knobheads that just you know organize summit twice a year and do a show once a week. That's all we do. We we got the easy. We got the easy side of things. You guys got to listen to this bollocks. (laughs) (laughs) Something I don't think we have addressed is the rain. Oh, that was fucking hilarious, wasn't it? Oh, my, my hat is wanked. Oh, you can't even excuse steam clean. You must be able to steam clean it, surely. I don't know. Mm, Send it down to dry cleaners in Wales. They're shit hot. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. Yeah, they do, right. hat, they do hats down there. But I remember it got to the end of the evening and I did my goodbyes and said, right, I need a chip on. Yeah. And we walked out to go to the car. And I, I literally parked right out the front. Yeah. Because also I went drinking. Walk down the steps. Walk down the steps into the lake. <laughs> Because the yeah. water was cascading yeah. down the road. Cascading. And oh, she, my fucking feet are wet. I was like, better stand on the steps. I go, get, nah, you're already wet. Just keep yeah, on walking. Yeah. We're going home. You're it doesn't home. fucking matter. Yeah, because we're dripping by the time you're home, love. Hey. Yeah. Well, we, hey. we drove out, obviously going up Priestley Hill back towards like the home and into Shepton. And the water was fucking running down that hill. And I thought, oh, mate, you know what's going to happen? Crosscombe's going to be Cross flooded. Yeah. Fuck. Which, Cross for anyone I don't know, is the village between Shepton and Wells. And it's always underwater. So I thought, I'll go over the top. I'll go up past the crematorium. That's where yeah. you're yeah. toes. Huh. So um, I'm thinking, I'm top of the hill here. There's water runs downhill, doesn't it? Uh, apparently not. So I got halfway across the hill before the creme and all there was was hazard lights up the road. Yeah. I was like, like you've got to be fucking joking me. Not this time of night. I need to get home. I've got the in-laws looking after the kids. I've fucking got to sort this out. And uh, there was an Audi underwater. <laughs> on the left-hand oh, side of the road. Fuck. That, right? It was still wanked when we came back through on the Sunday. Oh, was it? <laughs> so he was on the left-hand side of the road. The water was up like almost to his fucking door handle and there was some lady wading through the water and I was like, oh, fucking hell. And all these other cars are turning around and going back. She's sat there going, well, we can't fucking go this way, can we? I went, I ain't turning around now, love. She goes, you ain't going through there. I went, bang it in high. I am. <laughs> Watch me. Job on. So the lady come over and said, oh yeah, most embarrassing bit, the bloke in the car's my dad's. <laughs> I was like, fucking hell. She goes, oh. just do his favor. Don't go past too quick because I don't want to like get him more don't wet. Don't drown him. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, you'll be all right. And yeah, plowed on through. And then um, I think it was like Dinder the Dolker. That was all flooded as well. And it was fucking hideous. But... I know it rained all night, but it didn't feel it, like heavy, did it? Like no. you went out for a smoke and you thought, oh, still drizzling. No, it it just, Came it was back just, in fucking soaked. It was just constant. It would rain for like God knows, like twelve more than twelve hours. It rained. When, when, when people started turning up, it started raining. Yeah, and it didn't stop raining until the fucking morning, and it was just constant decent rain. I think that would have been. I don't want to be that moaning cunt now, but I'm going to be that moaning cunt. It would have been ideal if we had some shelter outside for smoking in that yeah, shit I, I did like, mention that I did say like 
to Corey. Maybe next what time. you've taken in the bar, you can put on to like a bit of a, a lean to <laughs> yeah, or something, mate. Jack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I can knock a pagoda up for him or, you know, get, get some bronze or something. Don't get me to do it because <laughs> it'll have holes in it. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, mate, like, yeah, fucking gleaming. Absolutely gleaming. Who was hanging a bit? Who's your man to put the fucking post up on Instagram with uh, Gru from the Minions? Grew from the minions. Yeah, where he goes through, he goes go to oh, the doghouse event. That now leave the oh, doghouse that, event. That's, that's, <laughs> that's that is a uh, first first time coming to the doghouse event, Mister Sorry, Jack mate. Simpson. So Jack parked his Honda FN <laughs> in the uh, his Civic FN in the Welling car park, and unfortunately, all the fucking trucks and pickups are taking the high ground in the car park, and he'd only been left with the low ground because you wouldn't even. Think about it, and you wouldn't even You're think. In a car park, and the fucking <sighs> memes that has come out of this have been wild. I'm gonna, re- I'm gonna try and read some of the memes out to you, but do it. If you're my- on the Discord, you already know. Oh my god! So there's this, this one here. Um, it, that's the just porn bit. It's a uh, my girlfriend holding my trainers while I wade to my car. I'm doing my part. <laughs> oh, from Starship Troopers. <laughs> And there's one of Ralph Wiggum on the bus, and it just says, Jack Civic watching the water rise in the car park. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> My Civic, after I beat on it relentlessly for five years, then park it in a lake. I'm tired, boss. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Oh, fucking hell. <coughs> Getting back to the well in and seeing your Civic doing its best impression of the ARA General Belgrano. <laughs> the <brilliant>. what? <laughs> Trade offer. I receive your money. You receive a flooded car. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Jack looking out the window to see a, spe- a suspiciously shaped Civic shaped <laughs> pond ornament. <laughs> ah, 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 that's me. Here I come. This is a picture of, uh, this is Killian Murphy in the film Oppenheimer sat naked in a chair. Me in the well-in cuck chair after ring ra- <laughs> Rich rang me to tell me my car's flooded. <laughs> Mr. Simpson, a second downpour has hit the Mendips. Your Civic is under attack. <laughs> George Bush <laughs> continues to read my pet goat. Uh, when I rip out the carpet to find more water, you are sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? <laughs> oh, they kill me. They fucking kill me. Uh, the well-in uh, staff God. asking if I, anyone if anyone knows the idiot in the Pacific. Me. Well, of course I know him. He's me. <laughs> Rich did say he took it. Really well. <laughs> I could. I felt so fucking bad. Rich, I, was, I was speaking to Rich the next day, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, it'd be all right with it. Just it still runs all right. Just have to try to cut." I I didn't click at first because I saw like a few weird pictures, and I was like, "Oh, that's shit." And then I had a little nap, and I woke back up again. I was like, "Oh shit, that was one of them." And I was like, "Oh no!" Well, that house down here, from just down the road from yours, that was going underwater as we drove past. So what, on our <clears> estate. <throat> No, 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 sorry, so... Uh, down at the bottom. On the left-hand side, oh, by the bends. Oh, those ones. Yeah, so oh. just before where the field is on the left-hand side, yeah. we was driving through and the water was right away across the road. And at that point, she was starting to panic and I was like... Banging on. Shag. On. You in a Range Rover? Yeah. You're getting fucking home! Oh, so and it's got, unless it's it breaks down, you're getting home! It's got the tractor engine in, so it's it can go anywhere. anywhere. Literally, yeah. I was like, we're fine. Don't worry about that this. Com- that engine would compress water. It'd be fine. There's no <laughs> hydrolocking in a fucking TD6. Yeah. And we're driving past, and then poor cunts were at their door looking out the glass, watching the water fucking oh. rising up. And, and they're like, no, 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 go away. And I'm like, they ain't going nowhere, mate, but inside. And I was like, what, what do you want me to do? Like, I know what that feeling's like. It's I've, horrible. I've had my house flooded before when we used to live with in- poo. No, we, no, yeah, well, that was <laughs> fucking dodgy drainage. Uh, yeah. That was my own <laughs> doing. But when we used to live in Pretty, at the top of the Mendips there, um, in between Yorkster and Yorkster Rifle Range and Cheddar Gorge, we literally lived in a dip. And the problem was, we were obviously doing pigs. So all the fields were obviously outdoor pigs. And you know what they do? They just tear the ground up, don't they? It's just mud. Um, of course, when it's just mud, the rain just runs straight off it. It doesn't absorb into the ground none because there's no grass or anything to soak it up. 
and it used to flood. Oh, the fucking house used to flood all the time. We built retaining walls. We did everything, but we lived in a dip. We lived in this massive dip and all the... What you should have done is what the Filipinos do and put them on stilts. Honestly, the amount of times we... Before I was born, I Eggs think it was stilts. before I was born, my mum and dad used to... Like, the, we had a big, big, or long... build a moat. But big, long Trowbridge units with pigs in. Of course, the water used to come in. The water used to come in and fill the slurry pit up. The slurry pit used to flood and flood up into the pens. And we used to have to ring the fire brigade. And uh, God bless the fire brigade. Those boys don't get enough fucking credit because they just don't do fires. They're there rescuing fucking livestock. And so they, they were in Crosscombe on Saturday night pumping for 12 hours straight. Jesus, were they? Yeah, they, From four o'clock in the morning. They, they, they fucking helped us save all the pigs out of the fucking, out of our long shed down there. And just literally just pulling pigs out and just run them into like temporary pens that we've made up in the yard and stuff. And yeah, it's fucking horrendous because just because just where we choose to do our pig farm on this big black map, big black patch on the ADAS map saying, do not do outdoor pigs here. My old man was like, ha ha, hold this beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there, there was a fair bit of water for pit. And that was the, the weirdest thing about it. it was like most of the drive home, I was on top of the hill. And when it's flooding on top of a fucking yeah, yeah. hill, the bottom's going yeah, to be wanked. bottom's going to be fucking That's what worse. Uh, Louis, the minibus driver, said, he was like, oh, I decided to take the top road instead of going through Crosscombe. And he was like, that was flooded. And that's when I knew it was fucking bad. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. But I mean, like when I walked, I walked off the steps and the water's running across my boots, I was like, oh, this is not good. And I've got like, you know, you see my little corral out in front of my house. I woke up in the morning to go to work. That was just full of water. I like, literally full. And I was like, I don't know if I've gone past the breather bricks. I don't care. But it was already flooded. <laughs> I'm yes- already flooded. It's already flooded yesterday. And I'm going to be- get some ducks, put them in there. I just, yeah. Fucking I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, a lot of the fills have flooded around here and we've been getting it quite bad down this part. Of the, well, I mean, all over the country, I suppose. But the Somerset level is predominantly floods anyway, doesn't it? We yeah, know that. Yeah. But like in the morning, I popped out to go and pick a few bits up and the whole road from like Wells up towards the bypass and the Shepton was totally fucking underwater. But then everything left and right of it, which was lower, was bone dry. So that just goes to show as well, we're paying all this money on our fucking council tax and they ain't fucking squaring the roads well, the drains. That's not, it's all fucking... Let's not get into the local council because I will kick... Well, they've gone bust, haven't they? Let's not, let's not beat around a bush. Somerset Council, I don't know if they've announced it yet, but they're going bankrupt. That, and I've never that been three five five's gonna come out. I've, soon. I've, I've never been more happy to put down the welder. I was like, well, I don't need to now because they've gone. You know, they've they've, they've they're crum- not going, are they've, they? They've crumbled under their own fucking weight of their own greed and fucking incompetence. Oh, look at it! Oh, we've we're doing some traffic light. We're doing some light to the work to the traffic lights down the road. Five months. I mean, five months. I know we like to light. fucking drag a job out, but Jesus, that's fucking ridiculous. It's the main fucking road. Five months. I've been a mule the other day. Like, my world up for half a year. He said you'll get your fucking missus on it. Your missus' whole job is to basically keep your keep your her eye on contractors and make sure they don't put a fat bill in. All them cunts down there are probably on fucking two hundred pound a day minimum, and they're just like billing it, just billing it. No one's there for six weeks. Ah, just fucking bill it. It'll be all right, will it? Oh, I've the seen them do paying. Is move a digger from one side of the road. It's not even a big digger. It's a mini digger to the other side. I'm back again. You get the problem is when government gets too bloated and just sure of itself and oh look at this money, you'll just keep raising council taxes, which is oh look at all these big budgets we've got. And sooner or later, all empires fucking fall. And I'm glad to see it, you bunch of greedy bastards. Denying planning permission for fucking hardworking people out there, raising council tax, denial of fucking public services. I'm Fucking happy to see it all crumble and Yeah, dying. I've got two wheelie bins, you cunts. Oh, no, well, you're the one that's caused it. He's like, do you know what? We could have made it work if it wasn't for Marl on his two wheelie bins and Fuck not, not sorting out his recycling every week. I so much. I'm having two wheelie bins and I'm going to put one either side of the fucking road. <laughs> I'll burn my rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. Anyway, sorry, so listeners, we're starting this. <laughs> I feel like I was the source of all these fucking problems that's got these two cunts started. Don't even get me started on Throws are better now, aren't they, boys? Yeah, just go <laughs> clear out there. A bit, a bit more fucking tequila and a couple more beers will be grand. Fire the world around. Uh, fucking, yeah, no, I'm glad to see it. Glad to see it. Fuck, like, government. Fuck so what happens now? Like, if they go bankrupt, word on the do street. we have to empty our own bins? Well, or do I just, 
Uh, order what? a few more wheelie bins. Well, so Marlon, fuck what happens now with that shit. They're, they're, what's, what's what happened with the next event? Let's talk, that's more important. Let's talk about that. Next event. Um, that's more interesting. I don't. I don't really know. Fuck Somerset Council. <laughs> I don't. Well, we we do know. I so say don't really know. Of course, we know. We always make it happen. We just got. We got to get a date pinned down within the next couple of days. We got a date in mind. We're just going through everything to make sure we can make it work. Um, and I need a little bit of feedback from all of you scumbags. Do you want a DJ? Do you want karaoke? Or do you want a band? Yeah, drop us a DM. Let us know what you want. Because at the end of the day, these are, these events are for you guys. So. If you've got any fucking suggestions, bang them on the Discord, bang them in the events section, drop us a DM on Instagram. I'd say one thing I would like, Marlon, and I think it's be right up your street as well. On the food side of things, can you do like a grill, like an American smokehouse Smoke style job. food? So like the hot that, roast you so, did at the event was fucking brilliant, mm, but I know you can get them catering people now, these big toe along right, fuck off that's smokers. Another, that's, a, that's a slight issue with the, um, the Bath and West. So it's owned by a catering company. So they do not, all their not the own... the Bath and West. The Bath no. and West is known by a catering company. <laughs> the Bath they... and West bar, the Thatcher's bar, is ran by a catering company. Right, okay. So they do all their catering. Well, so can what? they do an online course like you did for your auctioneering stuff and get on the smoking side of stuff as well? So we can, we can ask. I can ask the question. We can ask. I think within reason, if we want it, they can make it happen. They're a uh, good bunch. What we could do is like have a hoedown or something. We could do some line dancing. This is where me and Marlon come to blows because he's thinking we of could a full get... Western fucking swing and door job. And I was speaking to Ryan and uh, fucking Stace and I was like, we should just do like a fucking proper 90s neon raver night. And they're like, yeah! So we could have half and half. <laughs> we Combine could have the two together. a bucking bronco, a rodeo bowl. You yeah. said Marlon's side will be like, you need to know when to hold her. Me and Keith on the other side. This one's going to be a stinker. <laughs> Pass that bag of pills. Let's go. <laughs> man for the man, man for the reload. <laughs> you imagine that? Everyone like fluorescent t-shirts trying to ride a Brucking Bronco <laughs> off their nut. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, yeah, I've been to places where I've had them like inflate. You get the inflatable rings, can't yeah, you? That's, that's, yeah. that's the ones, They're always yeah. a fucking good laugh. Yeah. Always yeah. a good laugh. Sign the disclaimer first, break your neck, boom. Happy days. Yeah, spend, your, spend the rest of your life in a wheelchair. But a fucking event was lit. <laughs> so what I might do over the weekend is put up a couple of polls, see where we end up, see what we got to do. Yeah. See what happens. Just get f- dating. Once we've got dating, that's easy. We can, we can, everything else is a fucking, it's simple, isn't it? Yeah. I think live music's always a good one. Definitely have like a live band if you can. Cause like normally you get like a live band to start off with and there's a night nice sort of draws on, they disappear, get your karaoke out, DJ sort of shit later the, on. The, the only evening. thing is, I don't know what time you're going on to, innit? Ticket prices, I don't want to bump them up. No, no, no. You won't be going up. So, but if we got a band. It's cost. And, but then I can always DJ, that's not yeah. a problem. <laughs> it's trying to find the happy medium yeah. of, enough stuff to make it worth the ticket price, but not too much stuff that you've got to bump the ticket price up, if you know what I mean. Because obviously, we have 30 pound a ticket, which we thought was a big jump from what we charged, like 10 pound was the last one. Yeah. And that was literally just so we could like secure, be like, only so many people could come because the pub was only so big. But this time we were like, we're trying to raise money for charity. But then we're like, oh, we wanted to, we wanted to do a few other things, but we were like, if we put this cost in, there's going to be fuck all going to charity from the ticket sales. So it's like, a, yeah, but you guys, you guys didn't give a fuck. You were just like, yeah, fuck it, we're coming, whatever. So yeah, but yeah, it'd be sick. Um, what was the other I was going to say? Oh, I can't remember now. But yeah, it was, um, yeah, I don't know. Do you want to, um, should we have a look on the old laptop there, Marlonis, and uh, explain to the people what we're going to do? A bit of a surprise for you. This is... Uh, so, for all of you guys that didn't come to the auction, to the event, you're actually are in with a... Se- <laughs> well, <laughs> skibbity pop pop. You're actually in with a second chance because some of the lots actually went unsold. Well, that's not correct. Well, it's not. Well, wow. touchy, they went touchy un- subject. They went unpaid. Un- unclaimed, shall we say. They went unclaimed, some of the uh, lots. Obviously, big numbers thrown up on the on the with the fucking what are they called paddles. Well, big numbers on the paddles, but they went unclaimed at the end of the night. So that's not the point. But what the point is is that all of you guys have now listening got a chance to enter the doghouse seal bid auction. So there's going to be no uh, ten pound bid, twenty pound, thirty, forty. No, this is like Holtz. This is like a Holtz auction. I fucking eight these. Right. So we've got we got five. Mm. Is that right? We got four. Four. 
So we got four. We got four lots that went unclaimed. The vault is going. Yep. I just dropped a full can of beer and it didn't burst on the floor. That oh, his knee saved it. I'd get another one for you. I'd get him open in a minute. He'd be all right, Shag. <laughs> Do it over the deck. Pass it here. I'm not a stranger to danger. Bring up the brothers unplugged. Just tell them we're going to need to <laughs> borrow that deck back in a minute. <laughs> Sorry, team. Right. So. Pocox. So. Big up. As I said, George Pocock was down there. He actually bought the fucking the Honda Jazz, the legend. The poor cunt. Pocock's Poultry. These guys have put in a, a fucking fantastic auction lot. Um, so Marlon's just bringing it, bringing it up. Now, two seconds. Like I said, I'm not editing this damn fucking episode because we're both really ill and it's amazing that we're here regardless. Right, Pocock's Poultry Hamper. This is a family-run business. I'm very sta- sorry, my voice Established right now. in 1849. <laughs> The hamper what? consists of a whole chicken, two packs of bacon, a bag of wings, five chicken breasts, duck breasts, venison steaks, and some <laughs> thick thighs. Delivery within Devon, Dorset, Gloucestershire, Hampshire, and of course the greatest county in England, Somerset. So if you guys fancy get treating yourself to a whole fucking hamper of a fantastic of fantastic meats, just let us know, and we'll uh, uh, you know just just DM. All you got to do, DM us on Instagram. Or uh, drop us a fucking DM on uh, on Discord with what a seal bid. Just put in your bid. Highest bid takes it. Like we said, um, right. Make uh, sure you put Polcox poultry and a price. Yeah, that's all you need to do. Uh, right, I'm gonna get next on to the next lot. Is two weekend f- tickets to Festival on the Hills. It is the perfect weekend for festival first timers and season festival goers alike. The festival for all ages, from children. The grandparents, a place where you can create memories together. Come alone and you'll feel and you'll or and you'll feel a part of Festival from on the Hills from the moment you arrive. Those who come to Festival on the Hills feel a sense of ownership and community. It is truly your festival. You ask and we deliver. Festival on the Hills is an experience which will which will live with you forever, provide you with a lifelong friends, and ensure that there is nowhere else in the world you'd rather be in August. Set in the beautiful Honiton countryside, Festival on the Hills is a true community of music creativity friendship and fun enjoy our but enjoy our pack program of three days of music dance food real ale cider crafts games uh circus workshops and fun for all ages whilst camping under the stars with the family and friends marlon can you check out uh when the festival in the hills is I I can. Got it but yeah so there's two there's two uh weekend tickets to uh, festival in the hills kindly donated by mike quarterly um yeah so if you want to drop us a dm with uh drop us a dm with what you think you know just put in festival in the hills and a price and we'll do a seal bit on that one as well so festival in the hills is from thursday the 30th of may to saturday the 1st of june fantastic right the lineup looks bang in what is the no, what is the lineup say. Marlon? so there's billy ocean what Billy Ocean's there. Billy Ocean. Fuck off. Oh my God. Better put um, a bit in there, Reg. I'm fucking, yeah, I might do. Hold tight, I ain't finished yet. Nathan Carr. Tunde Bayewu. And Bewitched. Bewitched? No way. Say la vie. Yeah. And he said, hey boy. Da, da, da. Don't know the words. Da, 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 da. Uh-oh. Fuck. Do you know what? Hey, Fuck it, Marlon. Hey. I'm banging a bit in. I'm having a gun. You can all get but you fucked. have to fight Beth for it, You're right? going to f- fucking fight me for it. It's right. Um, I'll, oh. put, I'll put my money on I've been having shamrocks a fucking lot. I'll be strolling down the Falls Road. Anyway, right. The next auction lot that is up for sealed bid is the Love Honey Hamper. Sold. Oh, oh my God. There is so much stuff. Right. You put the little uh, the little post up. What I'm, I'm going to say, because I wasn't too sure on the night whether I could say it or not. This is donated by the by. Well, I was told I was told this is donated by Ollie Fox. Fuck it, it's donated by Ollie Fox. Uh, Kieran and his missive have kindly donated a love honey hamper. There is uh, my mate Dick Pump is in there. There is a fucking there's a cock mm. pump. There's a dildo. There's a flashlight. There's lube. There's there is oh. The, there's 
I think there's more than one dildo. There's more than one flesh. Like it's whole, I mean, it is everything you need to go and fuck yourself. This this, this is literally fucking. Uh, this is a proper fucking nineties girl band. Spice up your life. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so okay, I've had this 13 years ago I wouldn't be so much debt would I if you've ever wanted to go <laughs> fuck yourself I well, know you can this incredible hamper includes everything you need from lube to flashlights to massive dildos treat the wife treat someone else's wife it's a lot more fun if you don't get caught so yeah uh, like I said bang us a fuck drop us a DM if you want the love honey hamper just drop us a DM with your, with your what are you reckon you want to pay Keith, for don't it. bother me it's too late for you it's never too late. It's never too late. If we've learned anything from social media in the last few years, there's a lot of fucking people that get up to a lot of uh, a lot of lot of wild shit. Um, right, and the last lot, kindly donated by me on Springs. Uh, thanks to uh, our man Ryan Murphy putting us in contact and sorting it all out. Uh, it's one hour of shotgun tutoring. Um, if you've had a taste for clay shooting and want to progress further, or if you're a seasoned shooter and just want your uh, technique analysed then a one-to-one -one lesson with one of our qualified instructors is just for you. Now, I can speak from experience. I actually had a lesson recently at Mendip Shooting Ground on ski. You fucking needed it. And, oh my God, just changed, like, just one lesson changed everything about my shooting. I just, uh, even, my, we were shooting with Mule, even Mule was like, fuck me, that was... Did that you was... take your pump with you? No, I was shooting a Synergy, he was shooting ski, and it's got to be quick. Um, yeah, during the course of the hour, you will get to shoot a number of different targets and analyze your performance. If there's a problem with your technique, the instructor will help you find a solution. In that regard, every lesson is tailored for, for the individual. It's for one person. It's located in Hampshire, GU321HW. <laughs> kind thank you to me on Springs for donation this. So if, you fancy, if you're up in the Hampshire area or even if you just fancy traveling for a fucking day out and uh, having a bit, having some tutoring and then going on to a bit more shooting, me on Springs, uh, an hour of shotgun tuition is the one. So yeah. Drops a DM with uh, shotgun tuition and a little bid you want to put in. You know, we're just trying to raise some money. These guys obviously were kind enough to put some stuff in the auction. The stuff went unclaimed. So we want to just, you know, make the most of everything we've got. And it's all for a good cause for the Emote and Urine Disease Association. And trying to crank them numbers up on the Just Giving. And nice to see. It would be nice to see, wouldn't it? The doghouse guys getting my sister. Well, I say my sister. Thanks to us, to number one. So yeah, that would be incredible. That would be fantastic. So yeah, there you go. So you've got shotgun tuition, festival in the hills, love honey, fucking hamper, and Pocock's poultry meat hamper. So yeah, get on, uh, get on the Instagram, get on the Discord, drop us a DM with what you uh, with what you reckon, what you reckon you want to pay. And uh, we love a good reckoning. We do love a good reckoning. So yeah, there you go. There's, everyone's got a chance to bid on Summit now. Wonderful. I, I think we're um, are we somewhere handy? Marlon's yeah. I was just going furiously to... looking up something on his phone yeah. while I've been waffling on. So the total at the minute, bearing in mind we're not all done, we're not all said, we're not all through. We're nowhere near. The total is thirteen thousand eight hundred pound. Holy shit! You lot are fucking incredible. Holy fuck! Thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand pound. That's so nuts. Do you know what the worst, the weirdest thing is when we started this, I was thinking like, oh, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have a great night. But I was thinking we've got so many overheads. When we like, first started the, the conversations. Well, like we, we did seven but, grand last, last time, didn't yeah. we? And I was thinking, because there were so many overheads, I was like, I don't think we're going to, I no, don't think we're going to be as much that, as last year. At the year. beginning when like, because we had to raise a certain amount by a oh, certain time. Oh, me, yeah. And Not then we had to raise a certain amount by another date which is this weekend yeah this weekend coming yeah and i was like fuck i really really hope we do that and we have absolutely smashed the fuck out of it it was yeah it was it, we were thinking like oh if we don't do it like she's gonna lose her place in the marathon and she's trained so hard and it'd be such a great thing and that's it that's not like oh you, if you could get here it would be great it's like you need to raid this by this date, otherwise uh, you're going to get chucked out. We were worried about that, and we five times did, <laughs> like straight up. We five times did, like a week before. Yeah, it's just been incredible. And like for me personally, uh, we were going to have Gabrielle on this episode to do like a big thank you and that, but she's actually not. She's been still fucking healthy. She's, bitch. she's healthy, and she's not been exposed to the AIDS like Keith. So we're like, Keith, you've been exposed to Ebola, so you can come down here with us. Um, well, I was going to catch it from I was going to catch it from you when I yeah, say so. it doesn't matter at this point does it so yeah we were going to have Gabs on to give a bit of a thanks but we'll do that on a later episode but um, yeah just for me personally um, because at the end of the day this is 
a charity that means a huge amount to me and we've done this two years on the trot now and I think I've been a little bit greedy in that respect but to be honest I'm so so grateful I'm so grateful because it is a disease without a cure um, and it is a fucking it is a death sentence and I, w- I really hope that no one else ever has to go through it and that's why we're raising money at the moment to try and find a cure for this fucking disease because when you get told that you know your mum's got three years to live, there's no cure and it's going to be a fucking horrendous, horrendous death and the lead up to it is going to be nothing but pain and anguish. I won't want anyone, anyone else to ever have to go through what my sister, myself, my father and most of all my mum went through because it was fucking awful um, and that's why we're doing this and it means the world to me that all of you guys out there have just gotten behind this just because you heard some guy on a podcast waffling on and there's a charity that means a lot to him and his mum's dead and realistically you don't have to give a fuck like you don't have to give a fuck about me and what i've been through um but it's just so fucking humbling and my heart just swells thinking that all you guys give a fuck enough to donate this and raise this incredible amount of money for a charity that just means so much to me and a cause that is so close to my heart so for me and my family I just want to say thank you so, so much. It's just incredible. It really is. I'm going to stop now before I burst into fucking tears. <laughs> so, yeah. I was going to butt in and say, fuck me, I didn't realise you had art. <laughs> An excuse for a piss but, up, innit? Yeah, yeah. I, th- yeah. <laughs> I thought it wasn't the right time. <laughs> yeah. Um, right, I think that's a good place to end it because yeah. we've we've nearly hit two hours, which I didn't think, I thought we'd do an hour and I'd be it because we're ill, but... As always, we just manage to sit here and push on through, don't we? My voice is done. No, I'm done. I don't know. Well, I'm I'm not talking to anyone tomorrow. Fuck it, I'm going press washing. <laughs> I'm still in work, obviously. <laughs> right. Um, I think that about, about do. Like, um, uh, yeah, you lot are incredible. Yeah. We love you millions. We're gonna... um, humbled. Yeah. Humbled. I got nothing else to say. You blew my fucking mind, as you always do. Appreciate it. Right, we're going to uh, make like your dad and leave. Um. <laughs> <Fuck's sake. laughs> just no going down shop fucking... for 20 fags <laughs> you weren't going to end it on that was you? Uh, no. <laughs> no I couldn't leave it too heartfelt I had to get you somehow right thank you everyone for listening please rate us 5 stars on everything that you're listening to oh don't on. nobody cares yeah. shout out Reg whatever um, thank you for listening I've been Reg I've been Marlon I've been Keith and that's the end. Yes. Thank fuck for that. Until next week. Oh, bollocks. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Feeling hot, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs>